The haunting at Blackwood Manor. The wind whispered through the twisted branches of the old trees that loomed like ancient sentinels around Blackwood Manor. The mansion, once a grand spectacle, had succumbed to time and decay, now standing as a relic of a forgotten era on the outskirts of a fog-covered, remote town. The townsfolk dared not venture near the imposing structure, for they whispered tales of dark history, of unsolved mysteries, and of the vengeful spirit that haunted its halls. Sarah, a young historian with a burning curiosity, had heard these stories and was drawn to Blackwood Manor like a moth to a flame. The mansion's sinister reputation was a magnet for her inquisitive nature, and she had made it her mission to uncover the secrets that lay hidden within its darkened walls. As the fog crept in, enshrouding the mansion in an eerie embrace, Sarah arrived, clutching her lantern for a semblance of comfort. The air was thick with tension, as if the very atmosphere resisted her intrusion. But Sarah was resolute. She had come armed with her research tools and a fearless heart, determined to unravel the enigma that had veiled Blackwood Manor for centuries. Inside, the mansion was a labyrinth of creaking floorboards, faded wallpaper, and dusty relics of a bygone era. The only light came from her lantern, casting eerie, elongated shadows on the cracked walls. Sarah made her way through the gloomy corridors, guided by the faint whisper of her own breath. Deep in the heart of the mansion, she stumbled upon a room, its door slightly ajar. The room was a forgotten sanctuary, with a large, ornate mirror framed by ancient, tattered curtains. Sarah's breath caught as she saw her own reflection, pale and trembling, in the mirror's silvery surface. Determined to put her fears aside, Sarah ventured further, discovering a hidden chest filled with yellow, dusty manuscripts. She gingerly opened one of them, revealing the diary of Samuel, the restless spirit that was said to haunt the mansion. Samuel's words leapt from the pages, an anguished account of his life, his murder, and the dark secrets that Blackwood Manor held. As Sarah poured over the diary, the atmosphere in the room grew oppressive, as if the very walls were listening to her every breath. Suddenly, a cold gust of air swept through the room, extinguishing her lantern. Panic surged through her veins as the room plunged into darkness. She fumbled for her lantern, her heart racing, but before she could relight it, she heard the whisper of a voice. Sarah, it hissed, a spectral whisper that seemed to come from every corner of the room. Who's there? Sarah quavered, her voice barely above a whisper. Sarah, the voice repeated, more insistent now, you have awakened me from my eternal slumber. You must pay for your curiosity. A ghostly figure materialized before her eyes, its form twisted and tortured. It was Samuel, the vengeful spirit, his hollow eyes fixed on her with a burning intensity. His translucent figure seemed to seep through the very walls, an otherworldly presence that defied the laws of the living. Sarah stumbled backward, her heart pounding as she realized the depth of the peril she had invited into the mansion. I didn't mean to disturb you, she stammered, her voice trembling. Samuel's response was a blood-curdling scream that echoed through the mansion, shaking its very foundations. The diary fell from Sarah's trembling hands, and she felt an icy grip seize her throat. The ghostly apparition advanced toward her, his outstretched hand crackling with spectral energy. Desperate and filled with terror, Sarah managed to free herself from Samuel's grip and raced through the mansion's dark corridors, searching for an escape. The malevolent spirit pursued her relentlessly, taunting her with eerie whispers that seemed to come from the very walls themselves. As Sarah fled through the twisting labyrinth of the mansion, she stumbled upon a hidden chamber, its entrance concealed behind a bookshelf. Desperation lent her strength, and she pushed her way into the chamber, slamming the door shut behind her. She gasped for breath, her pulse racing, as she realized she was trapped. The chamber was dimly lit its walls adorned with faded, tattered tapestries that depicted scenes of violence and despair. A sense of foreboding hung heavy in the air, and Sarah knew she was not alone. Samuel's chilling laughter echoed in her ears, and then he manifested before her, his spectral form writhing with malevolence. You can't escape, Sarah, he hissed, his voice echoing with rage. Cornered and desperate, Sarah reached for the ancient, ornate mirror on the wall. She remembered the diary she had found and the secrets it held. With a trembling hand, she held the mirror up to the ghostly apparition. It screamed in agony, its form writhing and contorting in the reflection. The room filled with a blinding, otherworldly light, and the mansion itself seemed to shake as if in protest. With a final, deafening scream, Samuel was consumed by the mirror, his anguished spirit imprisoned once more. The mansion grew still and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. Sarah knew that the malevolent spirit of Samuel had been vanquished, at least for now. Her heart still raced, but a sense of relief washed over her. 
She had unraveled the secrets of Blackwood Manor, and in doing so, had paid a steep price for her curiosity. As she left the decaying mansion, the fog had lifted, and the old trees seemed to stand taller, as if they, too, had witnessed the vanquishing of a dark presence. Sarah's adventure had left her forever changed, a living testament to the unforgiving nature of vengeful spirits. As she looked back at the mansion one last time, she knew she had uncovered a truth that was better left buried in the shadows of Blackwood Manor. The Whispering Shadows of Ravenswood Forest Raven Ravenswood Forest, an ancient realm draped in perpetual mist, was an eerie, unfathomable place. Its gnarled trees reached out like skeletal fingers, their branches entwined with secrets and mysteries. The forest was a place where the line between reality and the supernatural blurred, and only the daring or the desperate ventured into its dimly lit pathways. Nia, a reclusive artist, had always been captivated by the forest's enigmatic allure. The tales whispered by villagers and the lore passed down through generations spoke of strange occurrences and the ghostly inhabitants that dwelled within the shadows of Ravenswood. Mia's heart, fueled by the need for inspiration, yearned to unravel the mysteries concealed beneath the forest's thick canopy. One fateful evening, Mia made her decision. Armed with her canvas, brushes, and a heart heavy with anticipation, she ventured into Ravenswood Forest. The fog hung thick in the air, obscuring her path and casting an otherworldly glow upon the gnarled trees. The very atmosphere seemed to pulse with an uncanny energy, as if the forest itself were a living, breathing entity. Mia wandered deeper into the forest, her senses heightened as she took in the eerie, creeping ambience. The whispers of the villagers echoed in her mind, warning her to turn back. But her artistic curiosity drove her forward. She set up her easel in a small clearing, illuminated only by the faint light of her lantern. With each stroke of her brush, Mia's surroundings transformed onto her canvas. The ghostly shapes of the trees, the mist that clung to every surface, and the palpable sense of foreboding were captured with uncanny precision. She lost herself in her art, her mind attuned to the mysterious energies of Ravenswood. As the night deepened, Mia felt a subtle change in the forest's atmosphere. The shadows that danced in her peripheral vision seemed to come to life, swirling around her like silent specters. Her painted trees began to sway gently, and her lantern flickered, casting eerie, elongated shadows that merged with the very essence of the forest. A voice, soft as a sigh, whispered in the darkness. Mia, it called, a wordless breath that seemed to emanate from the very air she breathed. Startled, Mia paused her work and strained to discern the source of the voice. Her heart quickened as the forest responded the very ground beneath her feet vibrating with an otherworldly pulse. Mia, the voice continued, a touch more insistent. You have awakened us from our slumber. You must pay for your intrusion. As the voice grew more pronounced, the forest came alive. The gnarled trees reached out with ghostly branches, and the mist thickened, enveloping Mia in its chilling embrace. Her paintings, too, seemed to breathe, their colors shifting and swirling as if they had taken on a life of their own. A sense of dread gnawed at Mia's soul as she realized she had unknowingly tapped into the supernatural forces that dwelled within Ravenswood. The ghostly inhabitants were roused, and their insistent whispers filled her ears, urging her to heed their warning. With trembling hands, Mia gathered her belongings and stumbled back along the dimly lit pathways, desperate to escape the forest's clutches. But the spirits of Ravenswood were relentless, their spectral forms materializing before her, each step she took met with an echoing footfall. Mia's lantern flickered and sputtered, its light waning as the forest seemed to swallow her whole. She could no longer distinguish the boundary between her paintings and the very trees that surrounded her. Panic surged through her veins as she felt her soul being tugged into the shadows. She realized then that the malevolent spirits of Ravenswood Forest craved her very essence, her creativity, her life force. They hungered for her soul, eager to make her one of their own, trapped in an eternal torment within the forest's depths. As Mia's lantern finally went out, plunging her into utter darkness, she knew she was at the mercy of the ghostly inhabitants. Their chilling whispers filled her mind, drowning out her own thoughts, their haunting voices echoing with ancient grievances. The forest seemed to close in around her, the gnarled trees converging with spectral limbs and the mist thickening until it was all she could see. The boundary between reality and the supernatural had dissolved completely. In the heart of the forest, Mia's last breath was stolen by the spirits of Ravenswood, her very essence absorbed into their eternal darkness. Her canvas and brushes, now abandoned in the eerie clearing, 
would remain as a testament to her ill-fated journey into the mysterious, unforgiving depths of the ancient forest. And as dawn broke, the villagers heard the whispers of the forest, a mournful lament carried on the morning breeze. They knew that another soul had been claimed by the malevolent spirits of Ravenswood, forever entwined in the eerie, dimly lit pathways of the enigmatic forest. The descent into Midnight Street the, the quiet suburban street known as Midnight Street was the embodiment of normalcy during the daylight hours. Houses with well-manicured lawns, picket fences, and cheerful neighbors who exchanged pleasantries characterized the seemingly idyllic neighborhood. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, a sinister transformation unfolded, and Midnight Street emerged as an eerie, dimly lit thoroughfare where nightmares were born. Mark, an insomniac haunted by the relentless torment of sleeplessness, had been wandering Midnight Street for weeks. It had become his nightly ritual, a desperate attempt to find solace in the quietude of the nocturnal world. He couldn't remember when he had last slept peacefully, the terrors that visited him in the night forcing him to confront the shadows that lurked within his own mind. As Mark strolled down Midnight Street, the pallid glow of the street lamps cast elongated, haunting shadows that played tricks on his senses. The houses, once filled with life and laughter, now stood as dark, foreboding sentinels that seemed to close in around him. The silence was deafening, a suffocating cloak that wrapped itself around his consciousness. Mark had always been aware of the fragility of the human mind, but his nightly forays into Midnight Street revealed the hidden terrors that lurked beneath the mundane. Each footfall on the cracked pavement seemed to resonate with a sinister undertone, as if the very street were whispering its malevolent secrets. One night, as Mark descended deeper into Midnight Street, he noticed a change in the atmosphere. The air grew dense with apprehension, and the flickering street lamps cast eerie, erratic shadows. He quickened his pace, an uneasy feeling gnawing at him, but there was no escape from Midnight Street's clutches. Ghostly apparitions began to materialize before him, their translucent figures shifting in and out of the dimly lit surroundings. Their mournful, hollow eyes seemed to pierce through Mark's very soul and he could hear their ghostly wails echoing in the night. Help us, they whispered, their voices a chilling chorus that reverberated through the deserted street. We are trapped in this darkness. Save us. The apparitions reached out to Mark, their cold, insubstantial fingers brushing against his skin. Panic surged through him as he realized that he was no longer in control. The specters seemed to beckon him, to draw him into the heart of Midnight Street's sinister web. Mark's descent into madness accelerated. His grip on reality slipping as he tried to distinguish the line between the waking world and the nightmare that Midnight Street had become. The ghostly inhabitants tormented him with visions of unspeakable horrors, and he found himself questioning his own sanity. The houses that lined the street were no longer empty shells but seemed to breathe with a malevolent life of their own. The windows flickered with eerie lights, and haunting cries echoed from within. Mark could no longer discern whether the houses were his refuge or his prison. As he ventured further, the street itself seemed to twist and writhe, the pavement cracking and shifting beneath his feet. The ground pulsed with a sinister heartbeat, and the very reality of Midnight Street warped around him. Mark was trapped in a never-ending nightmare, where the boundaries of the mind and the external world were indistinguishable. Mark's torment reached its peak as he stumbled upon a hidden, forgotten corner of Midnight Street. There, a towering oak tree cast its gnarled branches like grotesque hands reaching for the heavens. The ground beneath the tree was marred by a gaping chasm, a sinister maw that seemed to lead into the very depths of despair. The ghostly inhabitants converged around the tree, their hollow eyes fixed on Mark with an unrelenting hunger. Their whispers grew into a cacophony of anguish, echoing the torments of those trapped in the dark heart of Midnight Street. In a climactic moment of revelation, Mark understood the sinister secret behind the street. It was a place where the fragile boundaries of reality and nightmare had eroded where the darkness of the human mind had found a physical manifestation. Midnight Street was a prison for tormented souls, a place where the hidden terrors of the human psyche were trapped, yearning for release. With a surge of determination, Mark reached deep into his own fractured consciousness and summoned the strength to confront the malevolent spirits. He faced the darkest corners of his mind, where his own inner demons had contributed to the nightmarish transformation of Midnight Street. As he grappled with his own fears, the specters before him writhed in agony. Their forms began to dissipate, and the oppressive atmosphere that had gripped Midnight Street slowly lifted. The houses ceased their sinister whispers, and the gnarled tree stood still, no longer reaching for Mark's soul. With a final, haunting cry, the apparitions vanished into the night, 
their ethereal figures merging with the shadows of Midnight Street. Mark stood in the eerie silence, his breath heavy with the weight of his ordeal. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, Midnight Street returned to its facade of suburban tranquility. The houses, the pavement, and the street lamps appeared as they had during the daylight hours, their secrets buried beneath layers of normalcy. Mark knew that he had faced the fragility of his own mind and the hidden terrors that lurked within. Midnight Street had been a reflection of his inner torment, a place where the boundary between reality and nightmare had blurred. As he left the accursed street behind, he understood that the darkness he had confronted was not confined to Midnight Street alone, but a part of the human experience, a reminder of the fragility of the human mind and the horrors that could lurk within. The cursed lighthouse of Grimrock Isle Grim Grimrock Isle stood desolate, a forsaken outpost battered by the relentless fury of the sea. Its jagged cliffs rose like the teeth of some ancient, malevolent beast, and atop the highest peak perched the cursed lighthouse, a solitary sentinel that had claimed the souls of many who dared to occupy its desolate quarters. Rebecca, a woman of unwavering resolve, had taken on the role of lighthouse keeper after the tragic disappearance of her husband. The villagers had begged her not to accept the position, for Grimrock Isle was known as a place where the tempests of the sea and the supernatural converged in unholy union. Yet, Rebecca was determined to keep the light burning, a testament to her husband's memory. The island was a place of relentless tempests and ceaseless torment, a realm where the line between the living and the dead blurred. As Rebecca ascended the spiraling stairs of the lighthouse, the waves below crashed against the cliffs, their mournful cries echoing her ascent. The air was thick with the tang of salt and sorrow. The lighthouse was a testament to its grim history, its stones worn by centuries of torment. Its lantern cast an eerie, ethereal light that pierced the darkened depths of the ocean, guiding ships away from the treacherous rocks. But this light was no savior, it was a harbinger of doom. Rebecca's nightly vigil at the lighthouse was a lonely one, the wind's relentless howling and the waves' ceaseless pounding becoming her only companion. The isolation of Grimrock Isle weighed heavy on her spirit, and the endless darkness outside the lighthouse seemed to mirror the emptiness that had settled within her. It was on one of these desolate nights that Rebecca witnessed an eerie occurrence. The lantern's light began to flicker erratically, casting unsettling shadows on the lighthouse's walls. The air grew frigid, and the room seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. Rebecca knew that this was no ordinary disturbance. The lighthouse had sensed an intruder. A spectral figure materialized before her, its form twisted and tortured. It was the vengeful spirit of Captain Thorne, a mariner lost at sea many years ago and it bore the mark of a pact made with the darkness. His hollow eyes fixed on Rebecca with a burning intensity. Keeper of the light, he intoned, his voice a ghostly whisper that seemed to come from the very walls of the lighthouse. You have taken on the mantle of the lighthouse keeper, and in doing so, you have awakened the curse. Rebecca's heart quickened as she realized that her husband had not vanished into the depths of the sea. He had become one with the curse of Grimrock Isle. Captain Thorne sought payment for her new role a debt that had passed from her husband to her. I did not ask for this curse, Rebecca protested, her voice trembling. Captain Thorne's response was a blood-curdling scream that echoed through the lighthouse, shaking its very foundation. The lantern's light grew stronger, and its beam extended far out into the tempestuous sea, guiding ships toward the treacherous rocks. The curse had claimed Rebecca, and her own soul now bore the burden of Grimrock Isle. The lighthouse signals had taken on a sinister, otherworldly power, and Rebecca could no longer control their malevolent influence. Ships that had once relied on the lighthouse's guidance were now drawn to their doom, crashing against the rocks, their cries of despair joining the ghostly chorus of the dam. Desperate and filled with dread, Rebecca ventured into the heart of the tempest that surrounded the island. The storm that raged outside seemed to mirror the tempest within her soul. The very sea itself surged with anger, and the waves threatened to consume her. But she was determined to break the curse, to free her husband's soul and save her own. As she stood on the precipice of the cliffs, Rebecca called out to the vengeful spirit of Captain Thorne. Her voice carried on the gales of the storm. She pleaded for him to release her from the curse, to allow her husband's soul to rest in peace. In a climactic moment, Captain Thorne's spectral figure materialized before her, his eyes filled with torment and longing. He extended a spectral hand. And with a burst of ethereal energy, the curse that had bound Rebecca was shattered. The lantern's light flickered and dimmed, and the lighthouse signals returned to their normal, benign state. The storm outside gradually subsided, 
and the waves became calm. Rebecca had broken the curse, and the vengeful spirit of Captain Thorn was at last released from his torment. As the first light of dawn broke over Grimrock Isle, Rebecca felt a profound sense of peace. She had confronted the darkness that had threatened to consume her, and in doing so, she had freed her husband's soul from the curse that had bound it. The lighthouse, once a harbinger of doom, now stood as a symbol of hope and redemption. Rebecca knew that her nightly vigil at the lighthouse would continue, but it would no longer be a lonely one. Her husband's spirit would watch over her, a guardian of the light, and together, they would ensure that the curse of Grimrock Isle remained forever vanquished. The lighthouse's lantern cast a gentle, reassuring glow, a beacon of safety for the ships that sailed through the treacherous waters. Grimrock Isle had been a place of despair and darkness, but now it was a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit, a reminder that even in the face of the most malevolent curses, there could be salvation and redemption. The Whispers of Harrowed Hollow Harrowed Harrowed Hollow was a village shrouded in a perpetual haunting fog that clung to its twisted streets and ancient, gnarled trees. The villagers spoke of curses and whispered tales of tormented souls who had made the village their eternal home. It was a place where the living dared not tread after dark, for the darkness was said to be a cloak for the secrets that lurked within. Emily, a historian with an insatiable curiosity, had made Harrowed Hollow her latest research project. The village's sinister reputation and the enigmatic stories surrounding it had drawn her in like a moth to a flame. She was determined to uncover the dark secrets that had remained buried in the village's past. As she arrived in the village, the oppressive atmosphere weighed heavily on her shoulders. The fog was so thick that it seemed to swallow the very streets and houses, leaving only the dimly lit lanterns to pierce the obscurity. The villagers who remained shrouded their faces with heavy cloaks and avoided eye contact, as if fearful of acknowledging the outsider's presence. Emily's research took her deep into the village's history unearthing a trail of cryptic messages, tormented letters, and fading photographs. The secrets of Harrowed Hollow had been well guarded, and the restless spirits that lingered in the shadows did not take kindly to their hidden histories being exposed. One fateful night, as Emily delved into her research, she heard whispers in the darkness. Ghostly apparitions began to materialize before her, their forms distorted and tormented. They reached out with spectral fingers, their hollow eyes filled with an unspeakable longing. Emily, they whispered, their voices a chorus of despair that reverberated through the forsaken village. You have uncovered our secrets. You must pay for your intrusion. Emily's heart quickened as she realized that the curse of Harrowed Hollow was not confined to its tormented history. The restless spirits that had been trapped in the village sought retribution, determined to protect their secrets at all costs, desperate to escape the torment that had been awakened. Emily fled through the twisted streets of the village, her footsteps echoing in the oppressive silence. The apparitions pursued her relentlessly, their ghostly forms closing in as the fog thickened around her. As Emily reached the village's forsaken church, the shadows seemed to gather, their presence a malevolent force that defied the laws of the living. The church, a place that had once been a sanctuary, was now a haunted refuge for the tormented souls of Harrowed Hollow. With a final, desperate push, Emily managed to enter the church, slamming the heavy doors behind her. The ghostly apparitions wailed in frustration, their ethereal fingers passing through the wooden doors as if they were mere mist. Inside the church, Emily felt the weight of the village's secrets pressing down upon her. The walls were adorned with cryptic symbols and faded paintings that depicted scenes of torment and despair. The air was thick with the scent of incense and echoes of prayers long forgotten. As she explored the church, Emily discovered a hidden chamber beneath the altar. The room was a repository of the village's darkest secrets, a place where the sins of Harrowed Hollow had been buried. Emily's heart raced as she realized that the answers she sought were hidden within the chamber. With trembling hands, she opened a decaying chest and uncovered a collection of letters, diaries, and journals that chronicled the villagers' descent into darkness. The stories within revealed the depths of their torment the curses they had brought upon themselves, and the desperate measures they had taken to protect their secrets. But as Emily delved deeper into the documents, the church itself seemed to react. The air grew heavy with oppression, and the candles that lined the chamber flickered ominously. The ghostly apparitions gathered outside, their hollow eyes fixed on her. You have uncovered our torment, they hissed, their voices an ethereal chorus that filled the chamber. Now you shall share in our suffering. In a climactic moment, the apparitions descended upon Emily, their ghostly forms twisting and contorting around her. 
She felt their insubstantial fingers close around her, their spectral energy seeping into her very being. The weight of the village secrets bore down upon her, and she understood the consequences of unearthing the past. The restless spirits of Harrowed Hollow had claimed her, and she was now bound to the village, forever entwined in its history and its curse. As dawn broke over the village, the fog began to lift, revealing a silent, forsaken place. The church, once a haven for the tormented souls of Harrowed Hollow, stood as a mausoleum for their secrets. Emily's research had uncovered the weight of hidden histories, and in doing so, she had become a part of the village's curse. Harrowed Hollow would remain a place of eternal torment, its secrets and its suffering known only to those who had been ensnared by its curse. The whispers of the village would continue to haunt the living, a reminder of the consequences of delving into the darkness that lurked beneath the surface. The scream in the old asylum the, ab the abandoned asylum stood as a testament to suffering and despair, its decaying walls looming like a sentinel in the dead of night. The building had once been a place of torment, a repository for the vulnerable and the exploited, and now it was a forsaken husk that held the anguished echoes of those who had suffered within its walls. Michael, a seasoned paranormal investigator with a penchant for exploring the most haunted of locations, had come to the asylum with his team. The stories of the asylum's dark history had drawn them in like moths to a flame. They were determined to uncover the truth and document the paranormal phenomena that had been reported within. As they ventured into the asylum's dimly lit corridors, the air grew thick with unease, and the oppressive ambience of torment weighed heavily on their souls. The walls bore the scars of countless screams, their paint peeling to reveal the horrors that had been hidden beneath. Michael and his team set up their equipment, their cameras and recording devices capturing every inch of the asylum's desolation. It wasn't long before they began to experience the chilling encounters that had drawn them to the location. Paranormal investigations revealed ghostly apparitions, their tormented forms flickering in and out of existence. They seemed to reach out to the living, their hollow eyes filled with an unspeakable longing. The team's recording devices captured chilling whispers, desperate cries, and the anguished pleas of the asylum's former patients. As they delved deeper into the asylum's history, Michael and his team uncovered the disturbing truth. The asylum had been a place where the vulnerable had been exploited, their lives subjected to unspeakable horrors. The stories of abuse, neglect, and suffering were etched into the very foundations of the building. The spirits of the asylum's former patients cried out for release, their torment and despair a weight that the living could not escape. It became clear that the asylum had become a prison for their tortured souls, and Michael and his team had unwittingly awakened their wrath. One fateful night, as they conducted an EVP session in one of the asylum's darkest corners, the investigators were met with a shocking revelation. The spirits had a message, a chilling revelation that sent shivers down their spines. Michael, the voice whispered, its spectral presence filling the room. You were here. You were one of us. The revelation was a dagger to Michael's heart and he felt his past come rushing back. He had been a patient in the asylum as a child, his memories of that time buried deep within his psyche. The horrors he had endured in the asylum had become a dark secret, one that he had tried to forget. The spirits that lingered in the asylum's shadows knew his truth, and they sought to expose the torment he had suffered. Michael's team looked at him with a mixture of shock and disbelief, their cameras capturing the raw emotions that played across his face. The paranormal investigations had taken a personal turn, and Michael was faced with the consequences of his own exploitation. The spirits, once tormented and exploited, now sought retribution. The asylum had become a place of reckoning, and Michael had become its target. As the spirits closed in on him, Michael felt the weight of their suffering, their cries of anguish becoming a deafening chorus in his ears. The asylum's walls seemed to close in around him, its dimly lit corridors becoming a labyrinth of torment. Desperate to escape the relentless spirits, Michael and his team made their way toward the asylum's exit, their cameras still rolling, but the spirits pursued them relentlessly, their spectral forms twisting and contorting in the darkness. As they reached the asylum's entrance, the building itself seemed to resist their departure. The heavy doors that had been a portal to the asylum's torment refused to budge. Michael and his team were trapped, their only escape blocked by the very building that held their tormentors. In a climactic moment, the spirits descended upon them, their spectral energy closing in. Michael felt their insubstantial fingers close around him, their desperate cries filling the air. The weight of their suffering bore down upon him, 
and he understood the price of exploiting the vulnerable, the consequences of curiosity that had brought him to this dark place. The asylum's walls seemed to close in around him, the torment of the spirits becoming his own, as the spirits exacted their retribution. Michael's past and present collided in a maelstrom of anguish and despair. The asylum had become a place of reckoning, and Michael had become a part of its haunting history. As the first light of dawn broke over the asylum, the building's decaying walls stood as a silent witness to the torment that had taken place within. Michael and his team had become a part of that history, their memories and their torment forever entwined with the spirits that lingered in the shadows. The asylum's dark secrets would continue to haunt those who dared to venture into its decaying corridors, a reminder of the price of exploiting the vulnerable and the weight of hidden histories. A scream in the old asylum would echo for eternity, a testament to the consequences of curiosity and the price of uncovering the truth. The faceless watchers of Hollowbrook House Hollow Hollowbrook House loomed like a malevolent sentinel in the heart of a desolate town, its imposing facade a testament to a forgotten era. The mansion had long been abandoned, left to the ravages of time and decay but its dark history and the faceless spirits that dwelled within still clung to its walls. Daniel, an urban explorer with a penchant for delving into the unknown, had heard the stories of Hollowbrook House. Its ominous reputation drew him like a moth to a flame, and he couldn't resist the temptation to explore its mysteries. He had gathered a group of friends, fellow thrill-seekers, to accompany him on the expedition into the mansion's depths. As they entered the mansion, the air grew thick with a disorienting atmosphere that seemed to seep into their very souls. The once grand hallways were now cluttered with debris and shattered remnants of the mansion's opulent past. Fading wallpaper peeled from the walls, revealing glimpses of the dark secrets hidden beneath. The group's flashlights cut through the oppressive darkness, illuminating the haunting portraits that adorned the walls. Each portrait depicted a faceless figure, their features obscured by shadow and paint. The figures seemed to watch the explorers with hollow, unseeing eyes. In one room, they made a chilling discovery. A mysterious portrait hung on the wall, unlike the others. It depicted a group of faceless figures in a grotesque tableau, their forms twisted and contorted. The painting's eerie, disorienting quality sent shivers down their spines. As they continued to explore the mansion, the atmosphere grew even more unsettling. Whispers seemed to emanate from the very walls, their ghostly voices a haunting chorus of torment. The group began to feel the weight of unseen eyes upon them, as if the faceless spirits were watching their every move. The faceless spirits, malevolent and tormented, began to materialize before the explorers. Their forms were twisted and grotesque, their featureless faces a testament to their suffering. They reached out with spectral fingers, their hollow eyes filled with an unspeakable longing. You have trespassed into our domain. The spirits hissed, their voices a chilling cacophony that reverberated through the mansion. Now you must become one of us. Daniel and his friends realized that they had awakened the malevolent specters that dwelled within Hollowbrook House, and the consequences of their intrusion were becoming increasingly apparent. The spirits sought to make them one of their own, to take their faces and identities as payment for their intrusion. Desperate to escape the mansion, the group retraced their steps, but the faceless spirits pursued them relentlessly. The spirit's spectral forms twisted and contorted in the darkness, and the explorers felt their insubstantial fingers close around them. The oppressive atmosphere of the mansion seemed to conspire against them, disorienting their senses and clouding their judgment. The group became separated, their desperate cries and frantic attempts to find each other only serving to fuel the malevolent spirit's desire to make them faceless. As they reached the mansion's entrance, the spirits closed in on them, their spectral energy becoming a suffocating force. The heavy doors, which had once been a portal to the outside world, refused to budge. The explorers were trapped, their only escape blocked by the very mansion that had become their prison. In a climactic moment, the faceless spirits descended upon them, their hollow eyes fixed on their terrified prey. Daniel and his friends felt their insubstantial fingers close around them their desperate cries echoing through the mansion. The weight of the spirit's torment bore down upon them, and in a disorienting and anguished haze, their identities were stripped away. Their faces became featureless, their individuality lost to the malevolent spirits of Hollowbrook House. The spirits, now filled with the stolen identities of the explorers, watched as the faceless figures joined their ranks. The mansion's dark history and its torment had claimed new victims and the explorers had become one with the malevolent spirits that had dwelled within. 
as the spirits retreated into the darkness. Hollowbrook House stood in silence, its once imposing facade now a mausoleum for the stolen identities of the explorers. The consequences of trespassing into the unknown had become painfully apparent, and the mansion's oppressive atmosphere held the secrets of those who had dared to venture within. The faceless spirits of Hollowbrook House would continue to watch over the mansion, their tormented figures a reminder of the loss of identity and the price of exploring the faceless horrors that lurked within the shadows. The mansion, a place of darkness and despair, stood as a testament to the consequences of curiosity and the torment that could be unleashed when one delved into the unknown. The Shadows of Wraithmore Cemetery Wraithmore, Wraithmore Cemetery, a desolate and forgotten place, lay shrouded in darkness beneath a thick, enveloping fog. The tombstones rose like spectral sentinels, their silhouettes haunting the landscape. The chilling tales of the cemetery's history had drawn Olivia, a determined paranormal researcher, to this eerie location. Little did she know that her presence would awaken the elusive shadow figures that lurked among the graves, seeking to claim her as one of their own. Olivia had heard the stories that surrounded Wraithmore Cemetery. Whispers of apparitions and shadowy figures had piqued her curiosity. With a group of fellow researchers, she embarked on an expedition to uncover the truth behind the cemetery's dark reputation. As they entered the cemetery, the fog clung to their every step, wrapping them in a suffocating shroud of obscurity. The atmosphere was laden with a creeping dread, and the very air seemed to pulse with malevolent energy. Olivia and her team set up their equipment, their cameras and recording devices ready to capture any paranormal phenomena that might manifest. It didn't take long for the first chilling encounter to occur. Amidst the tombstones, ghostly apparitions began to materialize. Their forms were shadowy and indistinct, their presence a disorienting mix of fear and fascination. They seemed to watch the researchers with hollow, unseeing eyes, their figures twisting and contorting. Olivia and her team recorded the haunting apparitions, their voices filling the darkness with eerie whispers. The shadows whispered ancient secrets, their words unintelligible yet filled with foreboding. The researchers felt the weight of unseen eyes upon them, as if the shadowy figures were silently judging their intrusion. You have awakened us, the shadowy figures hissed, their voices a chilling cacophony that sent shivers down the researchers' spines. Now you must become one of us. Olivia realized that the legends were true, the shadowy figures of Wraithmore Cemetery were real, and they sought to claim her and her team as their own. The fear of the unknown was now a very tangible reality. Desperate to escape the encroaching shadows, Olivia and her team made their way toward the cemetery's entrance, but the shadowy figures pursued them relentlessly. The figure's spectral forms twisted and contorted in the darkness, and the researchers felt their insubstantial fingers close around them. As they reached the cemetery's gate, it seemed to resist their escape. The heavy iron bars, once a portal to the outside world, refused to budge. The researchers were trapped, their only escape blocked by the very cemetery that had become their prison. In a climactic moment, the shadowy figures descended upon them, their spectral energy becoming a suffocating force. Olivia and her team felt their insubstantial fingers close around them, their desperate cries echoing through the cemetery. The weight of the shadowy figures' presence bore down upon them, and in an anguished and disorienting haze, they lost their identities. Their faces and forms became shadowy and indistinct, their individuality stripped away. The shadowy figures, once elusive and mysterious, now watched as the researchers joined their ranks. The cemetery's dark history had claimed new victims, and Olivia and her team had become one with the shadowy figures that had lurked among the graves. As the figures retreated into the darkness, Wraithmore Cemetery stood in silence, its fog-covered landscape now a mausoleum for the stolen identities of the researchers. The fear of the unknown had taken on a new dimension and the cemetery's shadowy atmosphere held the secrets of those who had dared to venture within. The shadows of Wraithmore Cemetery would continue to watch over the desolate landscape. Their enigmatic forms a reminder of the consequences of meddling with the dead and the price of encountering the unknown. The cemetery, once a place of eerie fascination and dark legend, had become a chilling reality that claimed all who ventured into its depths. The curse of the forgotten orphanage and eerie, an eerie silence hung over the forsaken town, and at its heart stood the abandoned orphanage, a place where lost innocence and shattered dreams had given rise to vengeful spirits. Lucy, an urban explorer with a penchant for uncovering hidden mysteries, had been drawn to the orphanage's dark reputation. 
Little did she know that her exploration would awaken the vengeful spirits of the neglected children who once lived within its walls, seeking justice and retribution. The orphanage had been a place of neglect and sorrow, a desolate refuge for children abandoned by a world that had turned its back on them. Its walls were marred with the pain and suffering of those who had once called it home, and now, their spirits lingered in search of solace and justice. Lucy's curiosity led her to the orphanage's decaying doors, which creaked open as she entered the forsaken building. The air was thick with the weight of sorrow, and the darkness that clung to the walls seemed to pulse with the pain of lost innocence. Lucy and her team set up their equipment, their cameras and recording devices poised to capture the paranormal phenomena that had been reported within the orphanage. It didn't take long for the first disturbing discovery to occur. Hidden rooms within the orphanage depths held remnants of the past, forgotten toys, tattered children's clothes, and writings that spoke of despair and neglect. The voices of the orphaned children seemed to echo through the walls, their cries for help reverberating through the darkness. As they ventured deeper into the orphanage, ghostly apparitions began to materialize. The children's spirits, their faces etched with sorrow, reached out with spectral fingers, their hollow eyes filled with an unquenchable longing. You have come, they whispered. Their voices a haunting chorus of despair that filled the rooms. We seek justice, and you must help us. Lucy realized that the legends were true, the spirits of the neglected orphans were real, and they sought retribution for the suffering they had endured. The cycle of neglect and pain had left them no peace in life or death. Desperate to understand the children's pain, Lucy and her team delved further into the orphanage's history. They uncovered the stories of the orphans, the tales of abandonment and abuse that had filled their days. The spirits of the forgotten children had been left to suffer, and now they sought to make others bear witness to their torment. One fateful night, as they conducted a seance in one of the orphanage's hidden rooms, a shocking revelation occurred. The spirits had a message, a revelation that would change Lucy's life forever. Lucy, they whispered, their spectral presence filling the room. You are one of us. The revelation struck Lucy like a bolt of lightning. She had been an orphan at this very institution, her memories of that time buried deep within her psyche. The horrors she had endured as a neglected child had become a dark secret, one she had tried to forget. The spirits that lingered in the orphanage sought to expose her torment, and Lucy's team looked at her with a mixture of shock and disbelief. Their cameras captured the raw emotions that played across her face. The paranormal investigation had taken a personal turn, and Lucy was faced with the consequences of her own neglect. The spirits, once abandoned and suffering, now sought retribution. The orphanage had become a place of reckoning, and Lucy had become its target. As the spirits closed in on her, Lucy felt the weight of their suffering, their cries of anguish becoming a deafening chorus in her ears. The orphanage's walls seemed to close in around her, its hidden rooms becoming a labyrinth of torment. Desperate to escape the relentless spirits, Lucy and her team made their way toward the orphanage's entrance, their cameras still rolling, but the spirits pursued them relentlessly, their spectral forms twisting and contorting around them. As they reached the orphanage doors, the building itself seemed to resist their departure. The heavy doors that had once been a portal to the outside world refused to budge. Lucy and her team were trapped, their only escape blocked by the very orphanage that had become their prison. In a climactic moment, the spirits descended upon them, their ghostly energy closing in. Lucy felt their insubstantial fingers close around her, their desperate cries filling the air. The weight of the orphaned children's torment bore down upon her, and she understood the consequences of neglect and the cycle of suffering. The orphanage's walls seemed to close in around her, and as the spirits exacted their retribution, Lucy's past and present collided in a maelstrom of anguish and despair. The orphanage had become a place of reckoning, and she had become a part of its haunting history. As the first light of dawn broke over the orphanage, the building's decaying walls stood as a silent witness to the torment that had taken place within. Lucy and her team had become a part of that history, their memories and their torment forever entwined with the spirits that lingered in the shadows. The orphanage's dark secrets would continue to haunt those who dared to venture within its forsaken walls, a reminder of the consequences of neglect and the cycle of suffering that could be unleashed when one delved into the unknown. The curse of the forgotten orphanage would echo for eternity, a testament to the pain of lost innocence and the price of bearing witness to the suffering of the neglected. The wailing winds of a Vershade Manor avert the Vershade Manor, perched atop a cursed hill was a desolate and windswept place where time seemed to stand still. 
Its weathered facade and ivy-covered walls told the tale of a place haunted by more than just the element. Richard, a desperate man seeking refuge from his own troubled past, had heard whispers of the manor's dark reputation. He sought sanctuary, but little did he know that his arrival would trigger the release of the tormented spirits that dwelled within, and he would have to confront his own dark secrets to escape their clutches. The manor had been abandoned for generations, its halls and chambers echoing with the agony of the past. The curse that had befallen it left the surrounding land barren and bleak, the very winds that swept the hilltop howling with sorrow. Richard's life had taken a dark turn, and the weight of his choices had led him to a Vershade Manor. He believed that the manor's isolation could offer him a chance at redemption, a respite from the guilt and pain that had haunted him. Little did he know that the manor itself was a place of torment, and his arrival would set in motion a series of events that could either bring him salvation or seal his fate. Upon entering the manor, Richard was struck by the overwhelming sense of melancholy that permeated the air. The once grand halls were now filled with the remnants of a bygone era, their faded grandeur a stark reminder of the past. It didn't take long for the first paranormal disturbances to occur. Objects moved of their own accord, and the mournful cries of unseen entities filled the empty rooms. Richard and the ghosts of Avershade Manor were linked by a common desire, redemption. The spirits that haunted the manor were tormented souls seeking release from the curse that bound them, and they saw in Richard the potential for salvation. As night fell, the wailing winds outside intensified, their mournful chorus a chilling reminder of the manor's dark history. The spirits began to materialize, their forms twisted and contorted by the agony of their existence. They reached out to Richard, their spectral fingers yearning for release. You are our hope, they whispered, their voices filled with wailing sorrow. Redemption is within your grasp. Richard soon realized that the legends were true. The tormented spirits of Avershade Manor were real, and they sought his help to break the curse that bound them. The consequences of seeking refuge in the haunted had become all too real. Desperate to understand the spirit's pain, Richard delved into the manor's history. He uncovered the stories of those who had lived and died within its walls, their suffering etched into the very fabric of the place. He learned of the dark secrets that had cursed the manor and bound its inhabitants to an eternity of torment. One fateful night, as he ventured into the manor's hidden library, he made a heart-wrenching discovery. The spirits had a message, a revelation that would change his life forever. Richard, they whispered, their spectral presence filling the room. You must redeem your past to break our curse. The revelation struck Richard like a bolt of lightning. His past, filled with darkness and regret, had become intertwined with the manor's own history. The spirits of Avershade Manor sought not only their own salvation but Richard's as well. To free them, he had to confront the pain and guilt that had haunted him for so long. As the wailing winds outside grew more intense, the manor's walls seemed to close in around him, and Richard felt the weight of his own suffering. He understood that the power of redemption was within his grasp, but it would come at a great cost. The spirits closed in on him, their spectral fingers reaching out to touch his very soul. Richard felt their agony and despair, their cries echoing through the manor's chambers. The curse that bound them and the guilt that burdened him had become one. Desperate to break the curse and find redemption, Richard and the spirits of Avershade Manor united in their quest for salvation. They sought to confront the darkness that had plagued their lives and to find a way to break the curse that had tormented them for generations. As the first light of dawn broke over the cursed hill, the manor's ivy-covered walls stood as a testament to the power of redemption in the face of darkness. Richard and the spirits had found solace and release, breaking the curse that had bound them. The Vershade Manor, once a place of torment and suffering, now stood as a symbol of redemption and hope. The consequences of seeking refuge in the haunted had become a tale of salvation, and Richard had discovered that the power of redemption could break even the most formidable of curses. Blackwood Manor, a grand and mysterious mansion nestled on a desolate hill, was a place that had long been shrouded in whispers of the supernatural. The manor's dark secrets had remained hidden behind its imposing walls, but on this stormy night, Emily, a gifted medium, had been summoned to unlock the mysteries that lay within. The Grand Hall of Blackwood Manor was dimly lit, the flickering candles casting eerie shadows that danced on the ornate wallpaper. Rain lashed against the tall windows, and thunder rumbled ominously in the distance. Emily, her eyes filled with an otherworldly intensity, stood at the center of the room, surrounded by a circle of those who had gathered to witness the seance. The spirits of Blackwood Manor had long been restless, their presence a source of dread for the mansion's inhabitants. 
It was said that the manor had a tragic history, one filled with betrayal and untimely death, and the spirits carried with them a dark and urgent message. As Emily closed her eyes and took a deep breath, a profound stillness settled over the room. She reached out to the spirit world, calling upon the restless souls of Blackwood Manor to make their presence known. The atmosphere grew charged with an otherworldly energy, and the air seemed to hum with a supernatural force. The first spirit to manifest was that of a young woman, her form translucent and ethereal. She moved with a grace that belied her otherworldly nature, her eyes filled with a mournful longing. She spoke in a voice that seemed to come from the depths of the beyond. We are the forgotten, she whispered. We are the betrayed. Our voices have been silenced for far too long. As Emily continued to channel the spirits, more apparitions emerged. Each one carried with them the weight of a tragic tale, a story of betrayal and heartache. They spoke of the secrets that had been buried with them, of the injustices that had bound them to the manor. The revelations of the spirits were haunting and unsettling. They whispered tales of treachery, of love gone awry, and of the consequences of ignoring the warnings of the supernatural. Emily could feel their urgency, their desire to have their voices heard and their message delivered. But as the seance continued, Emily sensed that the spirits were not merely seeking to communicate. They were warning of a looming disaster. They spoke of a tragedy that was about to befall Blackwood Manor, a catastrophe that would repeat the sins of the past and bring about further heartache. The spirit's message was clear. Unless the impending disaster could be prevented, the manor and its inhabitants would be forever cursed to relive the torment of the past. Time was running out, and the spirits looked to Emily for help. With a sense of urgency, Emily sought to unravel the mysteries of Blackwood Manor. She delved into the history of the mansion piecing together the tragic events that had unfolded within its walls. The spirits guided her, revealing the secrets that had bound them to the manor and the betrayal that had sealed their fate. As the storm outside raged on, Emily and the gathered witnesses embarked on a race against time to uncover the truth and prevent the looming disaster. They scoured the manor for clues, unraveling the threads of a dark and intricate tapestry. The supernatural revelations grew increasingly chilling as the spirits guided Emily to the very heart of the tragedy that had befallen Blackwood Manor. The secrets that had remained hidden for generations were exposed, and the truth was more haunting than anyone could have imagined. In a climactic moment, Emily stood before the gathered witnesses and revealed the spirits' warning. She implored them to heed the message of the supernatural and to take action to prevent the impending disaster. The air was thick with tension, and the weight of the spirits' urgency pressed upon them. But time was running out, and the storm outside had grown into a tempest of unparalleled fury. The manor's walls seemed to quiver with the impending catastrophe, and the spirits of Blackwood Manor looked on with a mixture of hope and despair. In the end, it was a race against fate itself. The gathered witnesses, driven by the spirit's message, sought to avert the disaster that loomed on the horizon. Their actions were a reflection of the power of communication with the beyond and the consequences of ignoring the warnings of the supernatural. As the storm raged on, Blackwood Manor stood on the precipice of catastrophe. The spirit's message had been delivered, but the outcome remained uncertain. The manor's history was marked by betrayal and heartache, and the power of the supernatural had brought to light the tragic secrets that lay within its walls. The seance at Blackwood Manor had unlocked the mysteries of the past. And now, the fate of the mansion and its inhabitants hung in the balance. The spirits had spoken, and it was up to those who had witnessed the supernatural to determine the course of their own destiny. The power of communication with the beyond had been realized, and the consequences of ignoring the spirits' warnings could not be denied. The moon hung low and bloated in the Ankai night sky, casting a silvery pallor upon the overgrown garden of Willow House. The mansion, an abandoned Victorian relic on the outskirts of town, stood shrouded in a ghostly fog that veiled its secrets. This was where Sarah, a skeptical journalist, would embark on an investigation she'd never forget. As she approached the decaying mansion, her steps were muffled by the damp, twisted grass. The assignment had landed on her desk like a curse, uncovered the haunting of Willow House. Her editor had been cryptic about the details, but Sarah sensed the story went far beyond the typical haunted house tale. Sarah had never believed in ghosts. She considered herself a rational, level-headed woman who only trusted in what she could see, touch, and prove. But she had bills to pay and a reputation to uphold, so she reluctantly took the job. Pushing open the mansion's creaking, wrought iron gate, she couldn't help but feel a shiver crawl down her spine. Her breath formed tiny puffs of fog as she made her way up the cracked stone steps. 
She had heard rumors about the tragedies that had befallen those who dared to enter this forsaken place. Stories of vanishing souls and spectral apparitions clung to Willow House like an invisible curse. Sarah's guide and reluctant companion on this eerie journey was Thomas, a reclusive historian. His knowledge of the mansion's history was second to none, though his eccentric manner and disheveled appearance gave him an unsettling air. Are you sure about this, Sarah? Thomas inquired, his voice trembling ever so slightly. Once you step inside Willow House, there may be no turning back. Sarah rolled her eyes, determined to maintain her facade of skepticism. It's just an old house with a reputation, Thomas. I'm not afraid of a few ghost stories. Thomas led her through the front door, which groaned in protest as if it, too, dreaded their presence. The entrance hall was grand but shabby, its faded wallpaper adorned with intricate floral patterns. The air hung heavy with an unsettling scent, a mixture of mildew and ancient secrets. Let's start in the library, Thomas suggested, leading the way with an oil lantern that cast eerie shadows on the walls. The library was dimly lit, bookshelves lining the walls, and cobwebs hanging like gossamer drapes between the shelves. A chill seemed to wrap itself around Sarah's bones as she studied the room. So, what's the story with this place, Thomas? Why is it so infamous? Thomas cleared his throat and began to recount the mansion's dark history. Legend has it that Willow House was built by a wealthy family in the 19th century. They lived here in splendor, hosting grand soirees and living a life of luxury. But that all changed one fateful night. Go on, Sarah urged, her skepticism giving way to curiosity. The family patriarch, Benjamin Willow, became obsessed with the idea of eternal life. He dabbled in the occult and performed dark rituals within these very walls, Thomas explained. But his pursuit of immortality led to a series of gruesome events. People began disappearing from the town, and rumors of sinister ceremonies spread like wildfire. The townsfolk decided to take justice into their own hands. The historian's voice grew hushed, as though he were afraid of being overheard. One moonless night, they stormed Willow House. They say the family, consumed by their lust for immortality, had been transformed into vengeful spirits. The townspeople sealed them inside the mansion and fled, leaving behind a legacy of horror. Sarah's skepticism had transformed into a mixture of dread and fascination. She followed Thomas as he led her deeper into the mansion, the oil lantern's flickering flame casting eerie, dancing shadows. They entered a room that appeared to be a study. The walls were lined with faded, time-worn portraits, and in the center of the room was a large, ornate desk. Sarah noticed a stack of old diaries piled haphazardly. These are the diaries of the Willow family, Thomas said. They document their descent into darkness, the rituals, and their obsession with immortality. As Sarah began flipping through the pages, the atmosphere in the room grew even more oppressive. The diaries told a horrifying tale of desperation and madness, of blood rituals and curses that tore the family apart. But as Sarah read on, strange occurrences began to unfold around them. Whispers in the air, shadows darting across the room, and an unrelenting chill that seemed to penetrate her very soul. She looked at Thomas, who appeared as unsettled as she felt. The climax of their journey came that night when they were alone in the heart of Willow House. The walls seemed to breathe, the portraits watched their every move, and the diaries beckoned them to delve further into the abyss of the mansion's history. It was then, in the dead of night, that they encountered the spirits of the Willow family. They appeared as ethereal figures, tormented and vengeful, their hollow eyes locked on the intruders who dared to uncover their secrets. A spectral wind howled through the mansion, extinguishing their lantern and plunging them into darkness. Sarah and Thomas stumbled through the corridors, pursued by the vengeful apparitions. As they reached the heart of the mansion, a grand ballroom, the spirits converged upon them. Sarah felt the icy touch of phantom hands upon her, and a chorus of anguished voices filled the air. It was in that moment that Sarah, once a skeptic, had her world shattered. She realized the stories were true, and the consequences of unearthing the past were far more chilling than she had ever imagined. As the spirits closed in, Sarah and Thomas made a shocking discovery about the mansion's dark history, a revelation that would change everything. The true source of the haunting was not only the family's dark rituals but also a sinister pact with a malevolent entity that now sought to claim their souls. The conclusion of their harrowing night was one of survival. In a desperate attempt to escape, they unraveled the entity's hold on the mansion and sealed it away once more, allowing the spirits of the Willow family to find peace. Sarah and Thomas emerged from Willow House, their belief systems forever altered. 
The mansion's haunting history would serve as a haunting reminder of the consequences of digging too deep into the past and the power of unresolved tragedy. The moon had dipped below the horizon by the time they left, leaving Willow House to stand in eerie silence once more. The ghosts had returned to their restless slumber, and the mansion resumed its vigil over the town, its secrets intact, and its horrors awaiting the next curious soul who would dare to enter its forsaken halls. The coastal village of Harbor's End was known for its beauty, but it was a place of sorrow for many who called it home. Fog blanketed the town, muffling its secrets and burying them in a shroud of mist. The towering cliffs overlooking the tumultuous sea held more than the promise of salty air. They concealed a tragic past, a tale whispered only by the wind. One foggy morning, Alex, a paranormal investigator with a reputation for uncovering the supernatural, arrived at Harbor's End. His purpose was to investigate the eerie sightings that had plagued the village for decades. Tall and with an inquisitive nature, Alex had spent his life seeking the unknown, though never truly believing in it. His destination was the secluded, cliffside cottage where the whispers in the dark were most frequently heard. The locals spoke of a ghostly presence, a woman who appeared as a shadow in the night and vanished with the dawn. A leaner, they called her, after the only word she was ever heard to speak. The leaner's tale was a mystery wrapped in sorrow. She had been a lighthouse keeper's wife, married to a man who spent his life battling the tempestuous sea. Her days were spent alone, tending to the lighthouse and watching the horizon, waiting for her beloved's return. But the sea was unforgiving, and one stormy night, it claimed her husband's life. He was lost to the roaring waves, leaving a leaner isolated and heartbroken. She refused to leave her cottage by the cliffs, waiting for a love that would never return. As Alex set up his equipment in the small, dimly lit cottage, he couldn't shake the melancholic atmosphere that clung to every corner. The walls were adorned with fading photographs of Alina and her husband, their smiles captured in happier times. The first night in the cottage passed quietly, and Alex's skepticism remained unchallenged. But as the days turned into weeks, the persistent whispers in the dark began to unnerve him. They were soft, almost inaudible, like the gentlest of sighs, but they were there, always there. Alex's obsession grew as he became increasingly captivated by the mysterious voice in the shadows. He played back his recordings, amplified and analyzed every whisper, every breath. He would stand at the window, staring out at the vast sea and its relentless waves, desperately seeking a connection to Alina, the woman he had never seen. One evening, after hours of analyzing the recordings, he heard something he couldn't ignore. Amongst the whispers, Elena's voice was clear, calling his name. Her spectral, distant voice held an unmistakable note of sadness. Alex's heart raced, and he felt a chill crawl up his spine. He was no longer a dispassionate investigator but a man consumed by a yearning he couldn't explain. He had become determined to make contact with the enigmatic Elena. As the coastal fog crept in, blanketing the village in its haunting embrace, Alex prepared for a seance. He lit candles, set up a makeshift circle, and held an old, tarnished locket he'd found in the cottage. The locket contained a photograph of Alina and her husband, locked in an eternal embrace, sitting in the dimly lit room. Alex whispered Alina's name, his voice trembling with a mixture of excitement and fear. Alina, if you're here, please show yourself. The candles flickered and the room grew colder, the air thick with anticipation. The shadows seemed to sway and dance, and the ghostly presence of Alina emerged before him. She was a phantom, a silhouette of a woman in an old-fashioned dress, her form shifting in and out of focus. Her voice, although faint, filled the room. Alex, you hear me? Tears welled in Alex's eyes as he nodded, choked with emotion. Yes, I hear you. I've been listening, Alina. As the seance continued, Alina revealed her tragic tale. She had remained trapped between the realms, unable to move on, yearning for the love she had lost. Her only solace was the sound of the sea, the one thing that connected her to her late husband. She had called out to Alex, drawn to his longing for the unknown. Over time, Alex and Alina formed a unique bond, one that transcended the boundaries of life and death. He spent countless hours speaking to her, listening to her stories, and sharing his own. They found solace in each other's company, even if their connection existed in the shadows of that old cottage. But as the days passed, Alex grew haunted by the knowledge that Alina was not truly at peace. Her lingering presence, her loneliness, was a constant reminder of the power of lost love. He couldn't bear to leave her in the shadows any longer. One night, a powerful storm raged along the coast, the sea's fury shaking the cliffs. The relentless waves pounded against the shore 
and the wind howled through the village. It was during this tempest that Alex made a decision. In a final, heartbreaking seance, he implored Alina to find her husband, to let go of her attachment to the world of the living. She hesitated, torn between the love she had lost and the man who had shown her kindness. As the storm raged outside, Alina's form began to waver and a spectral figure, her husband, appeared beside her. They reached for each other, their hands interlocking, a love that had endured across time and death. Alina's voice, now filled with a bittersweet peace, whispered one final word. Goodbye. As the first rays of dawn broke through the coastal fog, Alex watched as Alina and her husband faded into the mist, the whispers in the dark ceased, and the cottage was filled with an eerie silence. Alex left Harbor's End with a heavy heart, his obsession with the supernatural forever changed. He had encountered a love that defied even death's grip, and in the process, he had found himself forever connected to a coastal village where love, loss, and the longing for connection lingered in the salt-tinged air, forever whispered in the shadows. The rain fell in relentless sheets on a stormy night, a cacophony of thunder and lightning that drowned out all other sounds. But amidst the tempest, a group of friends approached a looming, decaying structure that had haunted their town for years. St. Agnes Asylum Olivia, a passionate paranormal enthusiast, had convinced her friends to join her in exploring the abandoned mental institution, notorious for the inhumane practices and suffering that had taken place within its walls. Armed with flashlights and courage, they had no inkling of the terror that awaited them. The asylum's grim silhouette rose like a monstrous sentinel against the night sky, its windows empty and soulless. The group ventured inside, their flashlight beams revealing peeling wallpaper, dilapidated furnishings, and the lingering scent of despair. Olivia's excitement was infectious. She had spent years researching the asylum's grim history and now she was determined to unearth its secrets, hoping to communicate with the tortured soul said to still roam its halls. As they moved deeper into the asylum, a chill settled in the air, a feeling of dread that crawled beneath their skin. Olivia sensed the eyes of the tormented spirits upon them, their presence growing stronger as they delved further into the abandoned structure. In a dimly lit room, Olivia set up her equipment, including voice recorders, cameras, and a spirit box. She urged the spirits to communicate her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and excitement. If there are any spirits here, please give us a sign. Let us hear your voices. The room grew cold, and the flashlight beams flickered. Whispers echoed in the shadows, like anguished sighs carried on the wind. The group exchanged fearful glances as they listened to the eerie, disembodied voices that filled the room. Get out, a voice whispered, filled with pain. Olivia was undeterred. She believed in her ability to connect with the spirits, even if they seemed troubled. We won't leave until we understand your story. We want to help. As the night wore on, the encounters with the spirits became more intense. Ghostly apparitions materialized, their faces contorted in agony, their screams echoing through the asylum's corridors. The friends, once filled with bravado, began to panic. The spirits were not benevolent, but vengeful, and they sought to share their torment. A malevolent spirit seemed to take possession of one of Olivia's friends, Sarah. Her eyes turned cold, her voice hollow, and she began to speak in a language that was not her own, a sinister incantation that chilled the others to their core. As Olivia and the others struggled to break the possession, the storm outside intensified, unleashing its fury with greater force. Thunder shook the asylum, and lightning illuminated the horrors that surrounded them. The very walls seemed to pulse with a malevolent energy, as though the asylum itself had absorbed the suffering of its past. The group realized they were trapped, unable to escape the asylum as the storm raged outside. Panic set in as they frantically tried to find a way out, but the asylum's layout was a labyrinth, and the spirit's power seemed to distort their sense of direction. As they stumbled through the asylum's darkened corridors, they encountered more spirits, each with their own tale of torment. A former nurse who had been driven to madness, a patient who had been subjected to cruel experiments, and countless others who had suffered and perished within the asylum's walls. Olivia's initial enthusiasm had given way to terror and remorse. She had unleashed something far beyond her understanding, and the consequences were catastrophic. The spirits were relentless in their torment, feeding on the fear and despair of their intruders. In a last-ditch effort to escape, the group gathered in the asylum's chapel, the room was filled with a sense of malevolence, and the air was thick with despair. Olivia pleaded with the spirits, her voice trembling. Please, we're sorry. We never meant to disturb your peace. We just wanted to understand. 
but the spirits showed no mercy. They manifested with a ferocity that was almost palpable, surrounding the group, their faces twisted in anguish and anger. The chapel's stained glass windows shattered with an otherworldly force, and the room seemed to twist and contort, as though reality itself was unraveling. As the spirits closed in, the group felt their sanity slipping away. They had become prisoners of their own curiosity, trapped in a nightmare that showed no signs of ending. Olivia realized the grim truth. They were destined to join the tormented souls who had suffered within the asylum's walls. With a final, desperate surge of determination, Olivia activated a device she had brought for emergencies, unleashing a blinding burst of light. The spirits recoiled, their anguished cries piercing the air. In the chaos, the group stumbled toward the exit, the blinding light acting as their only sanctuary. As they burst out of the asylum's doors, the storm's fury continued, but the rain seemed to cleanse them of the spirit's malevolent presence. They ran into the night, their breaths ragged, their hearts heavy with the knowledge of the darkness they had encountered. Olivia's quest for understanding had ended in a harrowing lesson on the consequences of neglect and cruelty. The spirits of St. Agnes Asylum had taught her that some secrets should remain buried, and some horrors were never meant to be unearthed. In the end, Olivia and her friends had survived, but they would forever carry the haunting memories of that night, a night that had shattered their belief in the boundaries of the supernatural and the dangers of delving too deep into the shadows of the past. The Grand Mansion loomed on the outskirts of the town, a magnificent relic of a bygone era now tarnished and decaying. It was here that Daniel, a struggling artist with dreams of fame and fortune, found himself upon inheriting the property from a distant relative he had never met. The mansion held a dark secret, one that would plunge Daniel into a nightmare he could never have imagined. The mansion's interior was a surreal gallery, its walls adorned with cursed paintings. The artwork depicted scenes of madness, despair, and grotesque beauty, each canvas a window into the tortured minds of its creators. The faces within the paintings were twisted in anguish, their eyes following Daniel with malevolent intent. As Daniel explored his newfound home, the paintings seemed to come alive, their spectral figures merging with the real world. The air was thick with a sense of foreboding, and the once magnificent mansion now felt like a malevolent entity, its walls closing in on him. One painting, in particular, captured Daniel's attention. It was a portrait of a man, his visage a grotesque mask of despair. The man's eyes bore into Daniel's soul, and he felt an irresistible compulsion to paint. He set up his easel and began to sketch, the mansion's eerie ambience fueling his creativity. As Daniel's hand moved across the canvas, he lost himself in the act of creation. The portrait came to life with a chilling intensity, the man within it clawing at the canvas, desperate to escape. The room grew colder, and a haunting whisper filled the air, beckoning Daniel deeper into his work. In the days that followed, Daniel's obsession with the cursed portrait deepened. He painted feverishly, his art growing darker and more disturbing with each stroke of his brush. The mansion's spirit seemed to infuse his work, guiding his hand and his mind toward madness. As his paintings took on a life of their own, they tormented him with nightmarish visions. The mansion's grandeur dissolved into a nightmarish funhouse, its grand halls twisting and contorting, trapping him in an ever-shifting maze of horrors. In his studio, the cursed portrait's subject whispered to him, his voice a haunting symphony of despair. Daniel, I can set you free. Paint me, and your torment will end. Daniel's desperation pushed him to the brink. He painted with a fevered intensity, his mind unraveling as he sought to complete the portrait. The spirits within the mansion reveled in his torment their laughter echoing through the haunted halls. One fateful night, as a blood-red moon cast an eerie glow on the mansion, Daniel completed the portrait. The man within the painting wept tears of blood. His torment finally released. The room seemed to tremble, and the mansion's spirits grew frenzied, whispering secrets and curses. But as the tormented spirit was set free, a sinister transformation overcame Daniel. He stared at the cursed painting, his reflection in the glassy eyes of the man trapped within. In that chilling moment, he realized that the portrait had claimed not only the spirit of its subject but also a piece of his own soul. With a sense of dread, Daniel understood that he was now bound to the mansion, a prisoner within its decaying walls, just as the man in the portrait had once been. The spirits within the cursed paintings cackled with malicious glee, their malevolent laughter a symphony of torment. As the days turned into weeks, Daniel's descent into madness was complete. The mansion's grandeur had crumbled entirely, replaced by a surreal, nightmarish landscape. 
His only companions were the spirits within the paintings, who reveled in his torment and whispered to him of the sinister price he had paid for his artistic ambition. In a final, harrowing confrontation, Daniel faced the spirits within the cursed paintings, their faces twisted in mockery. They taunted him, revealing that they had ensnared his soul in a never-ending cycle of torment, just as they had with countless others before him. Despair clung to Daniel like a shroud as he realized the cost of his ambition. He had sacrificed his sanity, his freedom, and his very soul for the sake of his art. The spirits within the paintings had granted him creative power, but it had come at a sinister price that would haunt him for eternity. In a moment of haunting realization, Daniel understood that he would forever be a part of the mansion's surreal gallery, a living painting of despair, his existence blurring the line between reality and the supernatural. He had paid the ultimate price for his artistic ambitions, and the mansion, with its cursed paintings, had claimed him as its own, a prisoner within its walls, an eternal masterpiece of madness and suffering. The Whispering Grove, an ancient forest shrouded in legend and mystery, lay deep within the heart of a sprawling wilderness. Its towering trees, gnarled and ancient, were rumored to possess a unique gift, the ability to speak. The whispers of the forest had lured many into its depths, and the stories they carried were both enchanting and ominous. Among those who had ventured into the forest was Emma, a young forest ranger with a deep respect for the natural world. She had heard tales of the Whispering Grove all her life, but now, her job had brought her face to face with its mystique. Emma's journey into the heart of the forest was both a challenge and a fascination. The shadows of the ancient trees seemed to close in around her, their branches shrouding the forest floor in darkness. She couldn't deny the sensation of being watched by unseen eyes, or the faint whispers that danced on the breeze, like secrets carried on the wind. As she delved deeper into the whispering grove, the ghostly guardians of the forest made their presence known. Spectral figures emerged from the ancient trees, their ethereal forms flickering in the dappled sunlight that filtered through the canopy. They were protectors of a cursed treasure hidden within the forest, guardians of a power that could both enchant and destroy. The spectral guardians regarded Emma with solemn, knowing eyes, their faces etched with the wisdom of ages. They spoke in hushed, otherworldly voices, their words an intricate tapestry of riddles and prophecy. You have ventured into the heart of the whispering grove, they intoned. To proceed, you must solve the riddle of the forest. The riddle was a haunting enigma that unfolded like a poem, each line rich with symbolism and meaning. The guardians spoke of a treasure that had the power to heal and the power to harm, a treasure that was both a gift and a curse. They explained that those who sought the treasure must first prove their worthiness by unraveling the secrets of the forest. Emma listened intently, her heart pounding with a mixture of wonder and trepidation. She knew that the fate of the forest and its enigmatic guardians rested in her hands, and she was determined to prove herself worthy. With the riddle echoing in her mind, Emma ventured deeper into the whispering grove. The forest's mysteries seemed to unveil themselves before her, its beauty and peril intertwined. She encountered trees that whispered ancient songs and creatures that moved with an ethereal grace. As Emma continued her journey, she realized that the forest itself was the key to solving the riddle. It spoke to her in a language of rustling leaves and murmuring streams, guiding her through its secrets. The forest was her ally and in its embrace, she found the answers she sought. The turning point came when she discovered an ancient, gnarled tree at the heart of the Whispering Grove. Its bark bore the marks of countless explorers who had ventured into the forest before her. As she touched the tree, its whispered words resonated with her soul. She realized that the treasure the guardians spoke of was not a material prize but a connection to the forest itself, a bond that could heal or destroy. With newfound clarity, Emma returned to the spectral guardians. She spoke the forest's wisdom, her words a blend of nature's song and human understanding. The treasure is the balance between human greed and nature's power, she declared. It is the need for respect in the face of the unknown. The guardians regarded her with a mixture of approval and sorrow. You have unraveled the riddle of the forest, they acknowledged. But there is one final choice to be made. They presented Emma with a decision that would determine her fate. She could choose to take the treasure, a power that would come at a great cost, or she could choose to protect the Whispering Grove, safeguarding its mysteries for generations to come. The forest itself seemed to hold its breath as Emma made her choice. Her heart ached with the weight of the decision, but she knew that the true treasure lay in preserving the sanctity of the Whispering Grove. 
With unwavering determination, she chose to protect the forest, to honor the balance between human ambition and nature's resilience. The spectral guardians nodded in approval, their figures fading into the trees. You have chosen wisely, Emma, they whispered. The whispering grove will remember your sacrifice. As she walked away from the heart of the forest, the whispers of the ancient trees seemed to caress her soul, a gentle reminder of the connection she had forged. Emma emerged from the whispering grove with a profound sense of awe and respect. Her encounter with the spectral guardians a testament to the mysteries of the natural world and the enduring power of the unknown. The forest, with its secrets and its guardians, would remain a part of her heart, a reminder that some treasures were not meant to be possessed but to be revered and protected. In the end, Emma had discovered a greater treasure, the wisdom and wonder of the Whispering Grove, and the enduring bond between the human spirit and the mysteries of the natural world. The old, abandoned train station stood in the shroud of darkness, its platforms cloaked in an eerie stillness. Mike, a late-night commuter, found himself alone on Platform 13, waiting for a train that had long since ceased to run. It was a moonless night, the stars hidden behind a thick veil of clouds, and an unshakable sense of foreboding filled the air. As Mike paced along the desolate platform, his footsteps echoed through the station like an otherworldly chant. The station's silence was broken only by the distant sound of a mournful whistle, a phantom train that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. And then, like a whisper carried by the wind, he heard it, a faint voice that seemed to emanate from the shadows. Hello, traveler. Mike's heart raced as he peered into the darkness, searching for the source of the voice. He saw a spectral figure, a ghostly silhouette standing at the edge of the platform. The figure was that of a man, his appearance blurred and indistinct. Who are you? Mike asked, his voice trembling with a mixture of fear and curiosity. The figure extended a translucent hand, its fingers beckoning him closer. I am a passenger, lost in the liminal space between life and death. Come with me, traveler and you will see the journey that awaits us. Unable to resist the spectral invitation, Mike approached the figure, his curiosity outweighing his fear. As he drew near, the platform began to shift beneath him, and the world around him warped and twisted. He felt as though he was being pulled into another realm. The spectral figure led Mike to a train that appeared as if from thin air, a spectral locomotive that shimmered in the dim light. The doors of the train cars opened with an otherworldly hiss, and Mike and the figure stepped inside. The train cars were filled with a surreal cast of passengers, each one a lost soul in search of something they had left behind in life. Their faces were filled with a longing that echoed through the ether, a melancholic chorus that tugged at Mike's heart. One passenger, a woman with tearful eyes, spoke of the dreams she had abandoned in her youth. Another, an elderly man, lamented the opportunities he had missed in his quest for material wealth. Each passenger's story was a haunting testament to the choices they had made and the regrets that haunted them. As the spectral train journeyed through the night, the passengers' tales grew increasingly surreal and unsettling. Mike encountered a businessman who had sacrificed his family for success, a poet who had forsaken her words for conformity, and a musician who had sold his soul for fame. Their stories were like a descent into the depths of their own despair. The spectral figure explained that this train was a vessel for lost souls, a purgatorial journey through their unfulfilled desires and the consequences of their choices. The passengers were trapped in an eternal cycle, reliving their regrets and never finding release. As the journey continued, the train's surroundings grew increasingly bizarre. The windows revealed a distorted and ever-shifting landscape, a surreal tapestry of dreams and nightmares. Mike felt as though he was navigating through a labyrinth of existence, a space between life and death. As the train passed through each ethereal car, the passengers' tales became more haunting, their faces more twisted with regret. The businessman's face contorted with grief as he witnessed the impact of his choices on his family. The poet's eyes filled with tears as she recited the verses she had never shared, and the musician's soul echoed with a mournful melody, the song he had longed to play but never could. Amid the despair, Mike felt a sense of existential dread, a fear that he too might become one of these lost souls, trapped in an eternal cycle of remorse. He realized that he had his own regrets, his own choices that haunted him, and he feared the spectral train might never release him. In a final, harrowing revelation, the train came to a halt in a nightmarish car, where a towering, ominous figure awaited. The figure's voice, a thunderous echo, spoke of the choices that haunted Mike, the regrets that clung to him like a shroud. 
It was a reflection of his own conscience, a manifestation of his deepest fears. As Mike confronted his own regrets and the choices that had shaped his life, the train car transformed into a mirror of his past. He witnessed the moments he had let slip through his fingers, the dreams he had abandoned, and the paths he had not taken. His heart ached with the weight of his own remorse, but the journey was not without hope. A spectral figure offered Mike a choice, to learn from the past, to confront his regrets, and to carry those lessons with him in life. It was a chance for redemption, a way to break free from the cycle of despair. With determination in his heart, Mike made his choice. He stepped off the spectral train, leaving behind the haunting journey and the lost souls that remained trapped within. As he returned to the abandoned train station, he felt a renewed sense of purpose and a deep appreciation for the choices that still lay before him. The spectral figure nodded in approval, its form beginning to fade. Remember the journey, traveler, it whispered, and choose your path wisely. Mike left the old train station with a newfound understanding of the weight of choices and the importance of living without regret. The phantom train on platform 13 had shown him the consequences of unfulfilled desires and the power of redemption. As he walked away from the station, he carried the lessons of the spectral journey with him, a reminder that life's choices were a sacred gift, a journey to be treasured and embraced, and an opportunity to shape one's destiny with purpose and meaning. Beneath the hallowed stones of an ancient and historic church lay the forgotten depths of the hidden crypt. It had remained undisturbed for centuries, a dark secret hidden beneath the prayers and pious echoes of the faithful. Father Joseph, a troubled priest with a past marred by secrets and guilt, was the one to unearth this cursed chamber. The hidden crypt had remained sealed for generations, a burial place for the church's most secretive and malevolent souls. Father Joseph, a man plagued by inner turmoil, was drawn to its shadowed recesses. As he descended the narrow, stone stairs into the depths of the crypt, he felt an oppressive presence weighing down on him, as if the very walls themselves were alive with malevolence. The air grew heavy and cold as he ventured deeper into the crypt's labyrinthine passages. The flickering light of his lantern cast long, menacing shadows that danced on the ancient stone walls. The whisper of the wind seemed to carry the distant cries of the tormented, and Father Joseph couldn't deny that he felt a palpable sense of unease. As he explored the crypt, he discovered tombs adorned with strange symbols and etchings of names he did not recognize. He had stumbled upon the final resting place of those whose transgressions had been hidden from the world, condemned to eternal darkness. Father Joseph's curiosity led him to a hidden chamber at the heart of the crypt. The chamber was filled with ancient manuscripts and parchments, detailing the dark deeds and unholy pacts of those who had been buried there. The very air seemed to reverberate with the restless spirits of the deceased, their angry whispers growing louder in response to Father Joseph's intrusion. It was then that he realized the extent of the curse he had unleashed. The vengeful spirits of the hidden crypt had been awakened, and they sought retribution for the sins of the past. They manifested as shadowy figures, their eyes burning with hatred, their ghostly forms moving with a relentless fury. Father Joseph knew he was no longer alone in the crypt. The spirit's manifestations became more overt and menacing with each passing moment. They whispered his name with malice, their icy fingers grazing his skin, and their faces twisted in anger and despair. The oppressive atmosphere in the crypt left him with no choice but to confront the vengeful spirits. Their voices echoed through the stone walls, recounting tales of betrayal and cruelty, secrets hidden for generations. Father Joseph felt the weight of his own guilt, and he knew he had to find a way to absolve himself and the tormented souls trapped in the crypt. The supernatural confrontations grew more harrowing with each encounter. The spirits sought justice for their past wrongs, and they would not rest until they had exacted their revenge. The very earth trembled beneath the church as the spirits' wrath grew stronger. In a desperate attempt at redemption, Father Joseph sought to communicate with the vengeful spirits. He gathered the ancient manuscripts and artifacts that filled the crypt, using them as a conduit to establish a connection with the tormented souls. His faith was shaken but he clung to the belief that he could help set the spirits free. As he delved into the crypt's history, he discovered that the church's founders had covered up their darkest secrets, and in doing so, had condemned their descendants to an eternity of torment. Father Joseph was determined to break the cycle of vengeance and offer the spirits a chance at redemption. In a solemn and haunting ritual, he invoked the spirits, speaking their names and offering his own remorse and penance. The crypt's shadows seemed to quiver, the spirit's anger giving way to a sense of recognition and forgiveness. 
the crypt's very foundations began to tremble, the ancient stones shifting and moving. The spirit's anger dissipated, and their forms began to fade. In their place, a sense of peace and release settled over the crypt, as if the souls of the tormented had finally found absolution. The hidden crypt was once again shrouded in silence. The oppressive presence lifted. Father Joseph had offered redemption to the vengeful spirits and in doing so, had found a measure of peace for himself. As he ascended the stone stairs and emerged into the dimly lit church above, he knew that the secrets of the hidden crypt were no longer hidden. The sins of the past had been exposed and, in a strange twist of fate, had been forgiven. The ancient church seemed to sigh with relief, as if it too had been cleansed of its dark history. Father Joseph, a priest forever marked by the haunted crypt, knew that he could never forget the faces of the vengeful spirits nor the weight of their torment, but he had found a way to offer them solace, and in doing so, had found a path to his own redemption. The hidden crypt remained hidden no more, its secrets exposed to the light. It served as a haunting reminder of the consequences of buried sins and the power of forgiveness. Father Joseph had ventured into the depths of darkness, but in the end, he had found a glimmer of hope, a chance for redemption, and a path toward absolution for the souls of the hidden crypt. Hallowed Hill, a mist-shrouded graveyard that had stood for centuries, was a place where time seemed to stand still. Its ancient stones and solemn, weathered statues had witnessed countless funerals and the passage of countless souls. Sophia, a young woman in search of solitude and meaning, had taken on the role of caretaker for the graveyard. Little did she know the chilling secrets that lay beneath the hallowed earth. It was on the night of a blood moon that the restless spirits of Hallowed Hill awakened. The crimson moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the gravestones. As Sophia made her rounds, she felt a shift in the atmosphere, a change that whispered through the misty air like a warning. The first apparition appeared before her, a translucent figure with mournful eyes. It was a woman dressed in a gown from a bygone era, her form ethereal and otherworldly. The spirit spoke in a voice filled with longing and regret. Her words carried on the chilling breeze. Guardian of the graveyard, she murmured. We have awakened on this night of blood, seeking retribution for the wrongs of the past. Sophia's heart pounded with a mixture of fear and curiosity. The graveyard had always been a place of solace and reflection for her, but now it had become a realm of the supernatural. The spirits of Hallowed Hill had risen, and they carried with them the weight of their unfulfilled desires and the memory of the wrongs they had suffered. As Sophia continued her rounds, more apparitions emerged from the shadows. Each spirit had a story to tell, a tale of love and loss, betrayal and revenge. They spoke of secrets that had been buried along with their bodies, of lives cut short and promises left unfulfilled. The graveyard had become a haunted tapestry of memories, a place where the past and the present converged. The spirits moved among the tombstones, their footsteps soft and ghostly, and Sophia could feel their eyes upon her as if pleading for her understanding. One spirit, a soldier from a long-forgotten war, spoke of the comrades who had betrayed him, leaving him to die on the battlefield. Another, a young woman who had perished in a tragic accident, lamented the dreams she had never fulfilled. The spirit's stories were like fragments of a forgotten history, and their voices echoed through the graveyard like a mournful choir. The apparition's revelations left Sophia with a sense of responsibility. As the guardian of Hallowed Hill, she had unwittingly become the mediator between the living and the dead. The spirits sought retribution for the wrongs of the past, but they also longed for the living to remember them, to acknowledge their existence. As the night of the blood moon wore on, Sophia delved deeper into the graveyard's history. She sought to uncover the buried secrets that had bound the spirits to this place, and in doing so, she began to piece together the stories of those who had found their final rest on Hallowed Hill. She discovered a tale of forbidden love and a tragedy that had torn a family apart. The secrets of betrayal and heartache, of unfulfilled promises and lost dreams, were woven into the very fabric of the graveyard. With newfound understanding, Sophia began to communicate with the restless spirits. She listened to their stories, offered them solace, and acknowledged their existence. The spirits responded with a mixture of gratitude and sorrow, their forms growing more translucent as the night waned. In a final, chilling reckoning, the spirits gathered on Hallowed Hill, their presence marked by the blood moon overhead. They revealed the extent of the wrongs they had suffered, the betrayals and injustices that had bound them to the graveyard. But instead of seeking vengeance, the spirits made a haunting request. They asked Sophia to share their stories with the living, to ensure that they would not be forgotten. 
They longed for the power of memory, for their existence to be acknowledged and remembered by future generations. Sophia agreed to their request. Knowing that the memories of the spirits would become a part of the tapestry of Hallowed Hill, she became the keeper of their stories, the guardian of their memories, and in doing so, she forged a bond between the living and the dead. As the crimson moon faded from the sky, the spirits of Hallowed Hill began to fade as well, their forms growing more transparent until they were mere whispers on the wind. They had found a measure of peace in knowing that their stories would be passed down through the generations, a testament to the enduring power of memory. Sophia continued to tend to the graveyard, her connection with the spirits a reminder of the relationship between the living and the dead. Hallowed Hill remained a place of solace and reflection, a realm where the past and the present converged, and where the memory of the restless spirits endured. The graveyard had become a sanctuary of remembrance, a place where the voices of the past echoed through the misty air, and where the power of memory transcended the boundaries between the living and the dead. Sophia, the guardian of Hallowed Hill, knew that the spirits would always be a part of the graveyard's history. Their story is a testament to the enduring power of memory and the connection between the living and the dead. The desolate coastal town of Devil's Reef had long been cursed by the legend of the phantom ship. Its tales were told in hushed tones, and its ghostly presence cast a pall over the once thriving fishing community. Captain James, a mariner whose past was shrouded in secrets, had heard the whispers of the cursed ship and felt an eerie pull he could not resist. The story of the phantom ship was a dark and haunting one. It was said to appear on moonless nights, its spectral form emerging from the mist-shrouded waters like a wraith. The ship's crew was made up of the damned, their souls forever cursed to sail the seas in search of redemption. Captain James, a man with a past steeped in sin and regret, felt a strange compulsion to seek out the ghostly vessel. He believed that the phantom ship held the key to his own redemption, a chance to confront the sins that had haunted him for years. One fateful night, as the moon hung low in the sky, the phantom ship materialized on the horizon. Its spectral sails billowed in the ghostly wind, and its bow cut through the Inkai waters. Captain James's own vessel seemed to be drawn toward the cursed ship, as if guided by some unseen force. As the ships drew closer, the phantom crew of the cursed vessel came into view. Their forms were twisted and grotesque, their eyes filled with a malevolent fire. They moved with an eerie grace, their footsteps echoing on the wooden decks. The crew beckoned Captain James aboard, their skeletal hands reaching out to him. He could feel their eyes upon him, as if they could see into the depths of his soul. With a mixture of fear and determination, he stepped onto the phantom ship. The moment he set foot on the deck, he felt a surge of cold, otherworldly energy coursing through him. He knew that the ship held the key to his redemption, but he also understood that the journey would be perilous and fraught with danger. As the phantom ship sailed through the dark waters, Captain James began to learn the stories of the damned crew. Each one had been cursed for their sins, their eternal torment a reflection of the wrongs they had committed in life. They spoke of betrayals, treacheries, and acts of cruelty that had sealed their fate. The captain himself was no stranger to sin, and the ghosts of his past transgressions weighed heavily on his conscience. He had spent his life seeking forgiveness and redemption, and now he believed that the phantom ship held the answer he had longed for. The encounters with the malevolent crew grew increasingly surreal and unsettling. They whispered tales of their own torment, their voices a haunting chorus that filled the ship's eerie silence. Captain James could feel their judgment their desire for him to confront his own sins and seek redemption. But as the days turned into weeks, the journey became a harrowing battle of wills. The malevolent crew of the phantom ship sought to break Captain James, to force him to confront the darkest corners of his soul. They subjected him to torment and temptation, pushing him to the brink of despair. It was in the darkest depths of the cursed ship that Captain James confronted his own past. He relived the sins and betrayals that had haunted him for years and he understood that the journey was a test of his resolve and his will to seek redemption. In a climactic battle of wills, Captain James stood before the malevolent crew and offered his own torment as a sacrifice. He acknowledged the weight of his sins and his desire for redemption, and in doing so, he hoped to break the curse that bound the crew to the phantom ship. The malevolent crew regarded him with a mixture of approval and sorrow. They understood the depth of his remorse and the sincerity of his quest for redemption. As the cursed ship sailed into the moonless night, the spirits of the crew began to fade, their ghostly forms growing more translucent. In a final, haunting moment, the phantom ship seemed to dissolve into the mist, its ghostly sails disappearing into the darkness. 
Captain James had confronted his past and found a measure of redemption. And in doing so, he had broken the curse that had bound the crew to eternal torment. The coastal town of Devil's Reef was no longer plagued by the legend of the phantom ship. Captain James had found a path to redemption. And the cursed vessel had disappeared into the mists of history. The town's once doomed fishing community began to thrive once more. As if the curse had never existed, Captain James continued to sail the seas, carrying with him the lessons of his past and the knowledge that redemption was a journey that required courage and sacrifice. The phantom ship had tested his will and his desire for forgiveness, and in the end, he had found a way to break the eternal curse and seek absolution for the sins that had haunted him for so long. Blackwood Manor, a grand and mysterious mansion nestled on a desolate hill, was a place that had long been shrouded in whispers of the supernatural. The manor's dark secrets had remained hidden behind its imposing walls. But on this stormy night, Emily, a gifted medium, had been summoned to unlock the mysteries that lay within. The grand hall of Blackwood Manor was dimly lit, the flickering candles casting eerie shadows that danced on the ornate wallpaper. Rain lashed against the tall windows and thunder rumbled ominously in the distance. Emily, her eyes filled with an otherworldly intensity, stood at the center of the room, surrounded by a circle of those who had gathered to witness the seance. The spirits of Blackwood Manor had long been restless, their presence a source of dread for the mansion's inhabitants. It was said that the manor had a tragic history, one filled with betrayal and untimely death, and the spirits carried with them a dark and urgent message. As Emily closed her eyes and took a deep breath, a profound stillness settled over the room. She reached out to the spirit world, calling upon the restless souls of Blackwood Manor to make their presence known. The atmosphere grew charged with an otherworldly energy, and the air seemed to hum with a supernatural force. The first spirit to manifest was that of a young woman, her form translucent and ethereal. She moved with a grace that belied her otherworldly nature, her eyes filled with a mournful longing. She spoke in a voice that seemed to come from the depths of the beyond. We are the forgotten, she whispered. We are the betrayed. Our voices have been silenced for far too long. As Emily continued to channel the spirits, more apparitions emerged. Each one carried with them the weight of a tragic tale, a story of betrayal and heartache. They spoke of the secrets that had been buried with them, of the injustices that had bound them to the manor. The revelations of the spirits were haunting and unsettling. They whispered tales of treachery, of love gone awry, and of the consequences of ignoring the warnings of the supernatural. Emily could feel their urgency, their desire to have their voices heard and their message delivered. But as the seance continued, Emily sensed that the spirits were not merely seeking to communicate. They were warning of a looming disaster. They spoke of a tragedy that was about to befall Blackwood Manor, a catastrophe that would repeat the sins of the past and bring about further heartache. The spirit's message was clear. Unless the impending disaster could be prevented, the manor and its inhabitants would be forever cursed to relive the torment of the past. Time was running out, and the spirits looked to Emily for help. With a sense of urgency, Emily sought to unravel the mysteries of Blackwood Manor. She delved into the history of the mansion, piecing together the tragic events that had unfolded within its walls. The spirits guided her, revealing the secrets that had bound them to the manor and the betrayal that had sealed their fate. As the storm outside raged on, Emily and the gathered witnesses embarked on a race against time to uncover the truth and prevent the looming disaster. They scoured the manor for clues, unraveling the threads of a dark and intricate tapestry. The supernatural revelations grew increasingly chilling, as the spirits guided Emily to the very heart of the tragedy that had befallen Blackwood Manor. The secrets that had remained hidden for generations were exposed, and the truth was more haunting than anyone could have imagined. In a climactic moment, Emily stood before the gathered witnesses and revealed the spirit's warning. She implored them to heed the message of the supernatural and to take action to prevent the impending disaster. The air was thick with tension, and the weight of the spirit's urgency pressed upon them. But time was running out, and the storm outside had grown into a tempest of unparalleled fury. The manor's walls seemed to quiver with the impending catastrophe, and the spirits of Blackwood Manor looked on with a mixture of hope and despair. In the end, it was a race against fate itself. The gathered witnesses, driven by the spirit's message, sought to avert the disaster that loomed on the horizon. Their actions were a reflection of the power of communication with the beyond and the consequences of ignoring the warnings of the supernatural. As the storm raged on, Blackwood Manor stood on the precipice of catastrophe. 
the spirit's message had been delivered, but the outcome remained uncertain. The manor's history was marked by betrayal and heartache and the power of the supernatural had brought to light the tragic secrets that lay within its walls. The seance at Blackwood Manor had unlocked the mysteries of the past, and now, the fate of the mansion and its inhabitants hung in the balance. The spirits had spoken, and it was up to those who had witnessed the supernatural to determine the course of their own destiny. The power of communication with the beyond had been realized, and the consequences of ignoring the spirits' warnings could not be denied. In the heart of the English countryside, nestled amid thick, spectral fog, stood Blackwood Manor, a centuries-old mansion. It had always loomed like a forgotten sentinel, guarding the secrets of the past. The very air around it seemed to whisper tales of long-buried tragedies and the restless souls that still called it home. Sarah, a young historian with a penchant for uncovering forgotten stories, and her skeptical brother, James, found themselves the unexpected inheritors of Blackwood Manor. They arrived at the imposing gate, a wrought iron structure wrapped in ivy, their breath visible in the chilly fog. As they stepped through the gate, the world seemed to change. The fog thickened, swirling around them like a living entity. The mansion itself, with its weathered stone walls and crumbling spires, appeared to grow taller and more imposing with each step. Sarah's heart raced with a mix of excitement and trepidation. She had dreamt of uncovering the secrets hidden within Blackwood Manor's walls, but now, as the mansion loomed before her, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. James, Sarah whispered, her voice barely louder than the rustling leaves. Can you feel it? The weight of history here. James rolled his eyes. You always were the dramatic one, Sarah. It's just an old house. But Sarah knew better. She'd read about Blackwood Manor's dark past, about Lady Evelyn Blackwood, the tragic mistress of the house who was said to have died under mysterious circumstances. They entered the mansion, and immediately, a shiver ran down their spines. Inside, the air was heavy with the scent of aged wood and something else, something indefinably eerie. Flickering candles lined the grand hallway, casting dancing shadows on the walls. Sarah couldn't resist running her fingers over the portraits that adorned the walls. As she did, she swore she saw the eyes of Lady Evelyn Blackwood follow her every move, their expressions shifting from sadness to anger. The first night was sleepless. Sarah and James retired to their separate rooms, but neither could escape the unsettling feeling that they were not alone. In the darkness, Sarah heard faint, mournful strains of a piano drifting up from below. What is that? She whispered to herself. Days turned into weeks, and the siblings delved deeper into the mysteries of the mansion. Lady Evelyn's spirit, it seemed, was not content to remain hidden. She appeared to them as an apparition, her spectral form drifting through the hallways, her eyes filled with sorrow and anger. Sarah, driven by an insatiable curiosity, scoured the house for clues. In a dusty, forgotten corner of the attic, she stumbled upon an ancient diary. Its pages were filled with Lady Evelyn's words, a heartbreaking account of betrayal and despair. As they poured over the diary, the temperature in the attic plummeted. Their breath hung in the air like frozen clouds, and the candles lining the room flickered wildly. Suddenly, Lady Evelyn's ghost materialized before them, her eyes ablaze with a mixture of rage and sadness. You have uncovered the truth, she hissed, but it changes nothing. Sarah and James trembled as they witnessed the vengeful spirit's anguish. Lady Evelyn's presence grew stronger, her fury intensifying with each passing day. She began to torment them, appearing at the foot of their beds, her mournful wails echoing through the mansion. The siblings felt trapped in a nightmare, their once promising inheritance now a prison. Sarah knew they had to find a way to appease Lady Evelyn's tormented soul and put her to rest. Late one night, guided by flickering candlelight, they ventured into the attic once more. Armed with the knowledge from Lady Evelyn's diary, they performed a solemn ritual, beseeching her spirit to find peace and forgiveness. As they chanted the words, the attic seemed to come alive. The spectral piano played a haunting melody. The portrait's eyes wept tears of sorrow, and a chill settled over the room. And then, in a burst of ethereal light, Lady Evelyn's ghost appeared once more. For a moment, her eyes held the same rage, 
But as she listened to their pleas, her expression softened. Slowly, she began to fade, her form dissolving into the cold, dark air. With one last, mournful sigh, she was gone. Sarah and James felt the mansion's oppressive atmosphere lift, the weight of history and tragedy finally dissipating. Blackwood Manor was still old and eerie, but it was no longer haunted by the vengeful spirit of Lady Evelyn Blackwood. As they left the mansion behind, Sarah and James couldn't help but feel a sense of closure. They had unraveled the dark past of Blackwood Manor, and in doing so, they had set Lady Evelyn's spirit free. But even now, as they looked back at the imposing mansion one last time, they knew that the echoes of its haunted history would linger, forever shrouded in the fog that clung to its ancient walls. Amidst the heart of a forgotten forest, concealed by gnarled and twisted trees, lay an abandoned cemetery. Its weather-worn gravestones, covered in thick moss, whispered tales of long-forgotten souls who had been laid to rest here. The wind, as it rustled through the overgrown foliage, seemed to carry with it the faint cries of these unremembered dead. Alex, a fearless paranormal investigator with a burning desire to prove the existence of ghosts, had heard whispers of this forsaken place. He was drawn to it like a moth to a flame, eager to unlock its chilling secrets. Armed with a flickering flashlight and an unyielding determination, he ventured deeper into the heart of the forest, guided only by the faint moonlight. As he approached the cemetery's rusted iron gate, he felt an unsettling chill crawl down his spine. The air grew heavy with the weight of the past, and he couldn't escape the sensation of being watched by countless unseen eyes. Yet, his excitement overpowered his fear, and he pushed open the gate, its hinges creaking in protest. The moment he stepped inside, a haunting hush settled over the forest, as though nature itself held its breath in reverence. Rows upon rows of moss-covered gravestones stretched before him, their inscriptions obscured by the passage of time. Alex's heart pounded with both excitement and trepidation. The night was quiet, save for the faint sound of distant, unearthly whispers that seemed to emanate from the very earth itself. The air was thick with anticipation, and Alex knew he was not alone. The restless spirits of the forgotten souls buried here were awakening. As he cautiously moved deeper into the cemetery, Alex caught fleeting glimpses of eerie apparitions, shadowy figures that flickered like candle flames in the moonlight. They whispered incoherent words, their voices laden with sorrow and longing. With each step, the atmosphere grew more unnerving, and the gravestones themselves seemed to shift and rearrange, as if the souls beneath them were reaching out for his attention. The cemetery's heart, a long-forgotten mausoleum, beckoned to him like a siren's call. Inside the mausoleum, a cold, damp air hung heavy, cobwebs draped like shrouds from the ceiling, and the flicker of his flashlight revealed ornate sarcophagi that lined the walls. Here, the whispers were louder, more desperate, as if pleading for recognition. As Alex reached out to touch one of the sarcophagi, an icy hand grabbed his wrist, its touch like a vice. He gasped in terror and stumbled back, only to see the spectral figure of a woman, her face etched in anguish, fading into the shadows. Remember us, she pleaded in a voice that sent shivers down Alex's spine. We are the forgotten, the unremembered. We seek retribution for our neglected souls. The weight of his audacious investigation now pressed upon him. These souls, abandoned and disregarded by the living, sought justice for their untimely and unremembered deaths. They moved closer, a spectral procession of mournful figures, each one carrying the heavy burden of their unfulfilled story. Alex knew he had uncovered something far more profound than he had ever imagined. The importance of remembering the past, of acknowledging the lives once lived, weighed heavily on his conscience. He realized that his journey had taken him to a place where the line between the living and the dead blurred, and the consequences of neglecting the dead were made hauntingly clear. With newfound humility and reverence, he stepped back, his flashlight flickering like a fading ember. As he retreated from the mausoleum, he whispered his apologies to the restless souls, promising to share their stories with the world. The forest, once quiet, seemed to sigh in relief as Alex made his way back to the Iron Gate. The cemetery, now shrouded in moonlit fog, held its secrets close once more. As he emerged from the forgotten forest, he carried with him not only the weight of the unremembered dead but also the profound understanding that some mysteries were best left to rest in peace. Shadows of Forgotten Souls Deep within the heart of a forgotten forest, a place untouched by the march of time, an abandoned cemetery lay hidden, a relic of ages past. 
The trees, gnarled and twisted, seemed to guard it jealously, casting long shadows that concealed the secrets of the unremembered dead. Alex, a fearless paranormal investigator with an insatiable curiosity, had spent his life chasing the enigma of the afterlife. His passion was to prove the existence of ghosts, to shed light on the eternal mystery. And now, rumors of a forsaken cemetery drew him into the heart of the forgotten forest. As he ventured deeper, the forest grew denser, and the air seemed to thicken with every step. A heavy silence settled over the surroundings, interrupted only by the occasional rustling of leaves and the mournful cawing of distant crows. The moon, shrouded by wisps of eerie fog, cast a pale, ghostly glow over the landscape. Alex's flashlight cut through the darkness as he made his way toward the heart of the forsaken cemetery. His heart raced with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. The entrance to the cemetery was marked by a rusted iron gate. Vines entwined around its bars as if trying to keep intruders at bay. With each creak of the gate, Alex felt as though he was stepping into another world, a realm where the boundary between the living and the dead blurred, rows upon rows of gravestones. Weathered by time and covered in thick, green moss, stretched out before him, names and dates, worn away by the passage of centuries, whispered tales of forgotten souls who had been laid to rest here. Alex's footsteps echoed like distant thunder as he advanced further into the heart of the graveyard. It didn't take long for the atmosphere to change. A haunting chill settled in the air, as though the very earth itself mourned the souls beneath. The weight of the past bore down upon him, and he could not shake the sensation of countless unseen eyes watching his every move. The forest seemed to hold its breath, as if nature itself knew that this was a sacred place, a sanctuary for those who had been forsaken by time. The mournful sigh of the wind, the rustling of leaves, and the distant hoot of an owl created a symphony of melancholy. As Alex continued his exploration, he heard something otherworldly. A faint, unearthly whisper, like a breeze carrying long-forgotten secrets. The words were indistinct, whispers of voices long silenced by the passage of time. But he understood their plea, to be remembered. The whispering grew louder as he ventured deeper, and he glimpsed eerie apparitions in the corners of his vision, shadowy figures that flickered like candle flames in the moonlight. They seemed to reach out to him, yearning to break free from their forgotten existence. With each step, the cemetery's atmosphere grew more unnerving, and the gravestones themselves seemed to shift and rearrange, as if the souls beneath them were reaching out for his attention. He knew he was not alone, the restless spirits of the forgotten were awakening. His flashlight led him to the heart of the cemetery, a long-forgotten mausoleum concealed by creeping ivy. Its entrance was forbidding, the stone door sealed with age, but Alex felt a compelling urge to enter. He pushed open the door, and a cold, damp air engulfed him. Inside, cobwebs draped like shrouds from the ceiling, and the flicker of his flashlight revealed ornate sarcophagi that lined the walls. The whispers here were louder, more desperate, as if pleading for recognition and remembrance. As he reached out to touch one of the sarcophagi, an icy hand grabbed his wrist, its grip like a vice. His heart pounded, and he stumbled back, his flashlight illuminating the spectral figure of a woman. Her face etched in anguish, she seemed to fade into the shadows. Remember us, she pleaded, her voice sending shivers down Alex's spine. We are the forgotten, the unremembered. We seek retribution for our neglected souls. Alex's audacious investigation had taken a dark turn. These souls, abandoned and disregarded by the living, sought justice for their untimely and unremembered deaths. They moved closer, a spectral procession of mournful figures, each one carrying the heavy burden of their untold stories. With humility and reverence, Alex stepped back, his flashlight flickering like a fading ember. As he retreated from the mausoleum, he whispered his apologies to the restless souls, promising to share their stories with the world. The forest, once quiet, seemed to sigh in relief as Alex made his way back to the rusted gate. The cemetery, shrouded in moonlit fog, held its secrets close once more. He emerged from the forgotten forest, carrying not only the weight of the unremembered dead but also the profound understanding that some mysteries were best left to rest in peace. The Spectral Inheritance the mansion on the desolate hill had always been a place of dread and whispers. Its dilapidated Victorian-era structure loomed perpetually shrouded in darkness, as if the sun itself refused to touch it. But when the Smith family inherited the mansion, they had no choice but to confront the chilling mysteries it held. The Smiths, a family of four, had recently fallen into unexpected fortune. 
the news of their inheritance, a sprawling mansion that had been in their family for generations, was met with a mix of excitement and trepidation. The mansion had been abandoned for years. Its reputation as a place of restless spirits and malevolent energies whispered through generations. As they approached the imposing wrought iron gates, an eerie stillness settled over the desolate hill. The wind whispered tales of the mansion's grim history, of the power struggles and betrayals that had unfolded within its walls. The mansion itself was a decaying relic of opulence. Its grand facade, adorned with gothic arches and ornate balconies, was marred by time's relentless grasp. Gargoyles leered from the corners of the rooftop, their stony eyes seemingly mocking the smith's arrival. The atmosphere inside the mansion was heavy and oppressive, the air thick with the weight of history. The smiths couldn't escape the sensation of being watched by unseen eyes, and whispers of spectral voices seemed to cling to the walls. As they settled into their new home, strange occurrences became commonplace. Mysterious footsteps echoed through the hallways at night, and the mirrors in the house bore a sinister quality, reflecting distorted faces and shadowy figures that weren't there. One evening, as the smiths explored the mansion's labyrinthine corridors, they stumbled upon a hidden chamber concealed behind a bookcase. Within, they found a room adorned with portraits of their ancestors, each one staring down at them with expressions that seemed to change in response to their presence. Their exploration led them to doors that opened into blank walls and cold spots that sent shivers down their spine. Yet, they couldn't tear themselves away from the mansion's enigmatic depths. The turning point came during a stormy night when a sudden power outage plunged the mansion into darkness. Huddled together in the dim light of a single candle, the smiths decided to conduct a seance, hoping to communicate with the restless spirits that haunted their home. They gathered around a wooden table, hands trembling as they placed their fingers on a vintage planchette. Their voices quivered as they invoked the spirits, their words carrying through the room like a haunting melody. Suddenly, the atmosphere shifted, and the room grew icy cold. The planchette moved of its own accord, spelling out messages that seemed to come from beyond the veil of the living. The spirits, it seemed, were eager to communicate. But as the seance continued, the atmosphere grew more ominous. The spirits' messages became increasingly cryptic and malevolent. The planchette moved with an unnatural force, spelling out threats and curses, and the candles flickered wildly, casting eerie, dancing shadows on the walls. The smiths tried to end the seance, but the spirits refused to release them. The room seemed to come alive, the portraits on the walls contorting into grotesque expressions, and the mirrors reflecting a nightmarish distortion of their faces. In a moment of desperation, the smiths cried out, pleading for the spirits to cease their torment. Suddenly, the mansion shook with a deafening roar, and the room seemed to collapse upon itself. The walls closed in, the floor buckled, and the ceiling descended with crushing force. And then, as swiftly as it had begun, it was over. The room had returned to normal, the spirit's presence banished. But the smiths knew that they had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. As they left the mansion behind, they couldn't help but wonder about the corrupting influence of power that had driven their ancestors to such depths of malevolence. The tragic consequences of ambition had left a dark stain on their family's history, one that they would never forget. The mansion on the desolate hill would forever be a place of dread and whispers, a testament to the haunting legacy of those who had once called it home. The smiths had escaped its clutches, but they would carry the memories of their spectral inheritance with them for the rest of their lives. The Phantom of Hollow Hill In the heart of the isolated village of Hollow Hill, where the very air seemed to be shrouded in a dense, never-ending fog, a dark history lay buried beneath centuries-old gravestones. The village was like a haunted painting, a place where time moved slowly, and the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred into an eerie, unsettling existence. Emily, a determined journalist with a relentless curiosity, had always been drawn to the mysteries that swirled around Hollow Hill. Whispers of ghostly apparitions and eerie happenings had reached her ears and she could not resist the lure of the village's enigmatic past. As she arrived in Hollow Hill, the fog enveloped her car, swallowing the road ahead. The village streets were narrow, winding, and lined with flickering streetlights that cast long, sinister shadows. Hollow Hill seemed frozen in time, untouched by the modern world. The locals, a tight-knit and wary community, watched Emily with suspicion as she inquired about the village's eerie happenings. She learned of the malevolent spirit that was said to haunt Hollow Hill, a vengeful force born from a centuries-old curse.
The village's dark history dated back to a time when it was a thriving, albeit secretive, settlement. Its inhabitants had practiced forbidden rituals and worshipped ancient, malevolent deities. The spirit, it was said, was a manifestation of the darkness that had consumed the village, seeking revenge for the atrocities committed in its name. Determined to uncover the truth, Emily ventured into the heart of Hollow Hill, armed with a notebook and a flashlight. The fog clung to her like a spectral presence, obscuring her vision and amplifying the eerie stillness of the village. As she explored, she began to notice strange symbols etched into the walls of buildings, a cryptic language that hinted at something ancient and sinister. The air grew heavy with an oppressive sense of isolation, and she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched by unseen eyes. One night, as she walked through the village, she heard a faint, chilling sound, the ghostly choir of a long-forgotten religious hymn. It seemed to emanate from the village's abandoned church, its eerie melody echoing through the fog-drenched streets. Driven by curiosity and an unshakable determination, Emily entered the church, her flashlight illuminating rows of empty pews and a decaying altar. The choir's haunting song grew louder, its ethereal voices echoing with an otherworldly resonance. And then, as she reached the altar, the singing abruptly ceased. The church was plunged into darkness, and the air grew icy cold. Emily felt a presence, a malevolent force that seemed to seep into her very soul. A ghostly apparition materialized before her, its form shifting and flickering like a wisp of smoke. Its eyes, hollow and filled with hatred, bore into Emily's very being. She stumbled back, her heart pounding with fear. You meddle in matters beyond your understanding. The spirit hissed, its voice a chilling whisper that seemed to come from the depths of the abyss. This village is cursed, and you shall share in our torment. Emily fled the church, her mind reeling with fear and confusion. The spirit's warning lingered in her thoughts, but she couldn't turn away from the truth she sought. She delved deeper into the village's history, unearthing tales of cursed relics and rituals that bound the spirit to Hollow Hill. In her quest for answers, Emily uncovered a hidden chamber beneath the village cemetery, a chamber that held the key to breaking the curse. Symbols etched into the chamber's walls revealed a ritual that could banish the malevolent spirit once and for all. As she prepared to perform the ritual, the fog outside thickened, and the village descended into an eerie silence. The ghostly choir returned, stronger and more haunting than before, as if warning her of the impending danger. With trembling hands, Emily followed the cryptic instructions, reciting incantations that echoed through the chamber. The air grew charged with an otherworldly energy, and the symbols on the walls seemed to come to life, casting dancing shadows. And then, with a blinding burst of light, the malevolent spirit materialized before her, its rage and desperation palpable. It tried to disrupt the ritual, but Emily's determination was unwavering. As she completed the final incantation, a brilliant surge of energy engulfed the spirit. It let out a blood-curdling scream, its form writhing and distorting. And then, with a deafening roar, it vanished, leaving behind a chilling silence that seemed to stretch into eternity. Hollow Hill was finally free from the curse that had plagued it for centuries. The fog began to dissipate, revealing a village bathed in the light of dawn. The locals emerged from their homes, their wary expressions replaced by relief and gratitude. Emily had lifted the curse, but she knew that the village's dark history would never truly fade. The consequences of meddling with the supernatural were a burden she would carry with her for the rest of her life. As she left Hollow Hill behind, she couldn't help but wonder about the tragic fate of those who had once inhabited the village, and the price they had paid for their ambition and arrogance. The malevolent spirit was gone. But the echoes of its torment would linger in the memories of Hollow Hill's residents, a reminder of the dark legacy they could never escape. The Haunting of Whispering Pines Whispering Pines, nestled deep within a foreboding forest of ancient, towering trees, had long been a place where nature and the supernatural seemed to converge. It was a remote cabin, seemingly untouched by time, that drew Mark and Lisa, a couple in search of a quiet, romantic getaway. Little did they know that their retreat would take a sinister turn into the realm of malevolent woodland spirits. As they drove deeper into the forest, the towering trees closed in around them, their branches forming an impenetrable canopy that blotted out the sun. The air grew thick with tension, and the whispers of the wind seemed to carry haunting echoes. Whispering Pines, with its rustic charm and secluded location, was the perfect escape from the demands of their busy lives. The cabin stood as a solitary sentinel amidst the ancient trees, its windows reflecting the dappled sunlight that filtered through the leaves. Mark and Lisa settled into the cabin, 
their excitement for the weekend ahead tinged with anticipation. The forest, however, seemed to pulse with an unnerving energy. The gentle rustling of leaves took on an ominous note, and the shadows cast by the towering trees danced with a peculiar, elusive grace. Their first night at Whispering Pines was marked by an eerie chorus of whispers that seemed to emanate from the very trees themselves. It was as if the forest had a voice, a haunting melody of secrets that drifted through the air. Mark and Lisa exchanged uneasy glances, unsure of the source of the unsettling sounds, as they ventured deeper into the forest. They began to catch glimpses of elusive shadowy figures darting between the ancient trees. These apparitions, if they could be called that, seemed to watch Mark and Lisa with hollow, empty eyes. Fear crept into their hearts as the boundary between the natural and supernatural world blurred before their eyes. The forest held more mysteries than they could have imagined. Hidden symbols etched into the trees and stones seemed to suggest a sinister presence lurking just beyond their vision. Mark, a curious soul, decided to investigate further while Lisa couldn't shake the feeling of impending danger. One evening, as Mark followed a trail of symbols deeper into the woods, he stumbled upon an old, faded journal half-buried beneath fallen leaves. Its pages were filled with the ramblings of a previous visitor, desperate warnings of malevolent spirits that haunted whispering pines. The journal spoke of a curse that had befallen the cabin in the forest itself, a curse born of ancient rituals and offerings to dark entities. It told of the spirits that had once been bound to this place, restless and vengeful, seeking retribution for the intrusion of the living. Mark returned to the cabin, his face pale with dread, and shared the journal's unsettling contents with Lisa. They realized that they were not alone in whispering pines, and the spirits of the forest were far from benevolent. That night, as they lay in their cabin, the whispers in the wind grew louder, their voices becoming an eerie chorus of malevolence. The cabin seemed to shudder and the ancient trees outside seemed to move with a life of their own, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. Spectral apparitions manifested within the cabin's walls, their ethereal forms taking shape in the moonlight. Mark and Lisa watched in terror as the spirits closed in, their hollow eyes fixated on the intruders who dared to disturb their cursed domain. Desperate to break free from the malevolent forces that surrounded them, Mark and Lisa decided to confront the spirits, armed with the knowledge from the journal. They began a ritual to appease the vengeful entities that haunted Whispering Pines. The cabin's walls seemed to tremble as they chanted ancient incantations and offered tributes to the spirits. The forest outside fell silent, and the whispers in the wind ceased, as if awaiting the outcome of the ritual. And then, with a blinding flash of light, the spirits manifested before them, their forms shifting and twisting. The cabin was filled with a frigid, supernatural energy, and Mark and Lisa's very breath seemed to freeze in their throats. You have trespassed upon our realm, one of the spirits hissed, its voice a haunting echo. But your reverence has appeased us. Leave this place, and we shall trouble you no more. Mark and Lisa, their fear palpable, nodded in agreement. With a final incantation, the spirits dissipated into the shadows, and the cabin's walls ceased their trembling. The ancient trees outside returned to their silent vigil. As Mark and Lisa fled Whispering Pines, they couldn't help but wonder about the fragile boundary between the natural and supernatural world. The forest had revealed its dark secrets, and they had paid the price for their intrusion. The echoes of the malevolent spirits would linger in their memories, a chilling reminder of the consequences of meddling with forces beyond human comprehension. Whispering Pines, once a place of tranquility, would forever be a realm haunted by the restless souls of the forest, a place where the whispers in the wind concealed the chilling tales of the supernatural. The Forgotten Orphanage, deep within the desolate, fog-shrouded countryside, nestled like a forgotten relic, stood an abandoned orphanage, a place that had once been a refuge for the lost and the lonely. Now, it was a decaying labyrinth of sorrow and despair, its crumbling walls echoing with the tormented cries of the children who had once called it home. Rachel, a curious urban explorer with a heart that yearned for forgotten stories, had heard whispers about the forsaken orphanage, rumors of disembodied laughter, ghostly footsteps, and children's drawings that seemed to appear out of thin air had drawn her to this place, a place where the cries of the forgotten resonated in the stillness of the fog-shrouded countryside. As she approached the orphanage, its facade loomed like a specter through the mist. The windows, shattered and empty, seemed to watch her with hollow eyes. The wind whispered through the overgrown grass, and the air was thick with a melancholic weight. 
Rachel pushed open the creaking door and stepped into a world frozen in time. The orphanage's interior was a haunting tableau, a place where toys lay broken and faded photographs of smiling children adorned the walls. The echoes of children's laughter seemed to linger in the air, distant and ethereal. Rachel's footsteps were swallowed by the silence as she ventured deeper into the orphanage's darkened corridors. She could feel the eyes of the lost souls upon her, their presence like a shroud of sorrow. As she explored further, she came upon a room filled with children's drawings, vibrant and haunting, depicting scenes of innocence and longing. One drawing, in particular, caught her eye, a depiction of a lonely child staring out of a window, the world outside obscured by thick fog. The drawing seemed to appear out of nowhere, as if the orphanage itself were trying to tell its story through the art of the children who had once sought solace within its walls. The night descended with a heavy sigh, and Rachel continued her exploration, the eerie stillness broken only by the occasional gust of wind that seemed to carry whispers of the forgotten children. The orphanage had more secrets to reveal, and Rachel was determined to uncover them. As midnight approached, Rachel ventured into the attic, a place shrouded in darkness and filled with a haunting sense of anticipation. It was there that she found a forgotten journal, its pages filled with the handwritten thoughts and dreams of the orphanage's young inhabitants. The entries spoke of loneliness, abandonment, and the yearning for a family that would never come. Rachel's heart ached as she read the words of innocent souls who had been left behind by a world that had forgotten them. But as she turned the pages, a sense of dread settled in her chest. The journal's final entry was marked with a trembling hand and tears that had blurred the ink. It told of a night when the children had gathered in the attic, their voices raised in a haunting chorus of nursery rhymes. Rachel, driven by a compulsion she couldn't explain, climbed into the attic's darkness, and there, in the dim light of her flashlight, she saw them, the children, their spectral forms huddled together, singing their mournful nursery rhymes. Their eyes were filled with a longing that transcended the boundaries of the living and the dead. Rachel realized that the orphanage had become a prison for their tortured souls, a place where the weight of abandonment and neglect bound them to this world. With a heavy heart, she began to sing along with the children, her voice joining their ethereal chorus. As she sang, the walls of the orphanage seemed to tremble, and the cries of the lost children grew louder, more desperate. And then, with a shattering crescendo, the spirits of the children began to dissipate, their forms fading into the darkness. Their voices, once filled with sorrow, turned into whispers of gratitude and release. The orphanage, once a place of suffering and despair, was finally free from the weight of its tragic past. Rachel had given the lost children the solace they had sought for so long. As she left the abandoned orphanage behind, she couldn't help but wonder about the suffering of innocent souls and the burden of abandonment and neglect. The echoes of the forgotten children's cries would linger in her memory a haunting reminder of the price paid by those who were left behind by a world that had failed them. The Cursed Lighthouse On a jagged cliff, where the relentless sea met the endless sky, stood a desolate and storm-battered lighthouse. This lonely sentinel of the coast had witnessed countless tempests and shipwrecks, its solemn duty to guide sailors safely through the treacherous waters. Captain Jackson, a weathered and resolute man, was the keeper of this haunted lighthouse. He had spent years tending to its needs, oblivious to the malevolent spirit that lingered within its time-worn walls, a spirit seeking revenge for a tragedy long past. The lighthouse, perched on the edge of a world where sea and sky merged into an indistinguishable gray, was a place of isolation and ominous beauty. The ceaseless crash of waves against the cliffs below filled the air with a haunting symphony of nature's fury. The lighthouse's beacon, a stark and ghostly glow against the encroaching darkness, swept the horizon with its eerie light. Its purpose was to guide sailors away from peril, but its history was marred by a curse that refused to fade. Captain Jackson, dedicated to his duty, kept a meticulous record of every ship that passed through his watchful gaze. He maintained logs filled with the names of vessels that had braved the relentless sea, only to be devoured by its unforgiving depths. Yet, there was one name that haunted the logs, the name of the ship that had met its doom on these treacherous waters, carrying with it the souls of the dam. As the stormy nights descended upon the lighthouse, Captain Jackson often found himself surrounded by an eerie presence, an unseen force that whispered mournful secrets in the wind, phantom ship sightings. Ghostly apparitions and disembodied whispers filled the lighthouse with a haunting aura of the supernatural. The ghostly whispers carried tales of betrayal and tragedy of a shipwrecked sailor who had met his end on these very cliffs. 
His restless spirit sought revenge against the cruel fate that had befallen him, and he saw Captain Jackson as the embodiment of the lighthouse's curse. One fateful night, as the tempest raged outside, Captain Jackson was drawn to the lighthouse's lantern room. The relentless pounding of the waves against the cliffs seemed to echo in his very bones, and there, in the lantern room, he saw it. The ghostly figure of the shipwrecked sailor, his form translucent and ethereal. His eyes burned with a vengeful fire as he reached out toward Captain Jackson. A spectral hand extended. You bear the curse of this wretched place. The sailor's voice echoed through the room, a chilling accusation. You must pay for the sins of those who came before you. Captain Jackson, shaken to his core, realized that he was in the presence of a vengeful spirit, a spirit that sought retribution for a tragedy that had occurred long before his time. Desperate to appease the ghost and break the curse that had plagued the lighthouse for generations, Captain Jackson delved into the archives, searching for clues about the shipwrecked sailor's fate. As he combed through the dusty records, he uncovered a tale of betrayal and greed. The shipwrecked sailor had been a humble crewman aboard a vessel that had been lured onto the treacherous rocks by a false signal from the lighthouse. The betrayal had cost the lives of all aboard, and the sailor's anguish had bound his spirit to the very place of his demise. Armed with this knowledge, Captain Jackson confronted the ghostly sailor once more, his voice filled with remorse and empathy. He vowed to honor the memory of the lost souls and to ensure that the lighthouse's beacon would forever guide ships safely through the perilous waters. The ghostly sailor, his eyes no longer burning with vengeful rage, nodded in acceptance. With a final, mournful sigh, he dissipated into the ether, his spirit finally finding peace. From that day on, Captain Jackson tended to the lighthouse with renewed purpose, his heart heavy with the enduring legacy of tragedy at sea. The cursed lighthouse had been freed from its malevolent past, and its beacon continued to shine brightly, guiding sailors away from peril and toward safe shores. As Captain Jackson looked out at the ceaseless crash of waves against the cliffs, he couldn't help but wonder about the relentless power of the sea and the enduring legacy of those who had perished beneath its tumultuous wave. The lighthouse stood as a testament to the price paid by those who dared to brave the treacherous waters, a place where the cries of the lost would forever echo in the salty breeze. The Malevolent Mirror In a forgotten corner of the city stood an old, decrepit mansion, its grandeur faded with time. Its walls were adorned with ornate, antique mirrors of all shapes and sizes, each concealing a sinister secret within its glass. This was a place where every reflection held a malevolent entity, waiting patiently for its next victim. Mia, an antique collector with a fascination for the macabre, had always been drawn to the old mansion's mysterious allure. Rumors of mirrors that held trapped souls and reflections that whispered forbidden secrets had piqued her curiosity. Little did she know that her fascination with the unknown would lead her down a path of darkness. One fateful day, while perusing the mansion's collection, Mia's eyes fell upon an ornate, cursed mirror. Its frame, adorned with intricate carvings, seemed to beckon her closer. As she gazed into its glass, a sense of foreboding washed over her, but she couldn't tear herself away, unbeknownst to Mia. Her reflection in the cursed mirror concealed a malevolent spirit, a being that had languished within the glass for centuries, bound by a curse that hungered for release. With Mia's unwitting gaze, the spirit found its chance. The moment Mia brought the cursed mirror into her home, the malevolent entity was set free. It began its relentless pursuit, lurking in the shadows of her world, always just out of sight but never out of mind. At night, when the house was shrouded in darkness, Mia began to notice the mirrors in her home acting strangely. Her reflection would distort and contort, taking on a sinister visage. Eerie voices whispered from within the glass, their words filled with malice and deceit. As the days turned into weeks, Mia's once refined appearance began to wither. Dark circles formed under her eyes, and her once lustrous hair lost its sheen. Her obsession with the cursed mirror grew, and she found herself spending hours staring into its depths, captivated by the malevolent entity that dwelled within. The antique mirrors throughout her home became her prison, their reflections twisting and warping her perception of reality. She was trapped in a claustrophobic nightmare, her own vanity and curiosity binding her to the malevolent spirit that sought to claim her soul. One evening, as Mia stood before the cursed mirror, her reflection began to change. Her eyes, once filled with life, now mirrored the darkness that lurked within the glass. Her lips curled into a sinister smile that was not her own. The malevolent spirit had grown stronger, and it sought to merge with Mia's very being, to consume her soul and escape the confines of the mirror realm. 
In a moment of desperation, Mir reached out and shattered the cursed mirror with a heavy object. The glass shattered into a thousand pieces, and for a brief moment, she felt a surge of relief. But her respite was short-lived. The malevolent entity, now free from the shattered mirror, surrounded her. It spoke with a chorus of eerie voices, each one more chilling than the last. You cannot escape us, Mia, the voices hissed. We are a part of you now, and you are a part of us. Mia's heart raced as she realized the truth. She had become a vessel for the malevolent spirit. It coursed through her veins, its malefic presence consuming her from within. Desperate to sever the connection, Mia sought the help of a paranormal expert, a man who had faced malevolent entities before. He arrived at her home, carrying with him ancient incantations and sacred artifacts. As he performed the rituals to banish the malevolent spirit, Mia felt its grip on her soul weakening. The mirrors in her home cracked and splintered, and the entity's eerie voices grew fainter. In a final, chilling confrontation, the malevolent spirit made one last attempt to claim Mia's soul. The mirrors in her home shattered in unison, and the entity emerged from the glass, its form a twisted, shadowy figure. With a resounding chant and a blinding flash of light, the paranormal expert banished the malevolent spirit back into the cursed mirror from whence it came. The mirror was sealed with ancient runes, its malefic power contained once more. Mia, her body and soul scarred by the ordeal, was finally free from the clutches of the malevolent mirror. She had learned the dangers of delving too deeply into the unknown, of letting one's vanity and curiosity lead to obsession. As she looked around her shattered home, surrounded by the remains of her once-beloved antique mirrors, she couldn't help but wonder about the malevolent entity that had sought to claim her soul. The mirrors, now devoid of their sinister secrets, stood as a stark reminder of the price paid by those who dared to peer too deeply into the malefic abyss of the unknown. The Phantom Express, at the edge of a dense, haunted forest, where the trees loomed like sentinels guarding the secrets of the night, stood an old, abandoned train station. Its time-worn structure, draped in creeping ivy and shrouded in mist, had witnessed the passage of countless travelers, both living and dead. Sam, a curious traveler with an insatiable thirst for adventure, had heard rumors of the spectral train that arrived at the station precisely at midnight. Its eerie allure had captured his imagination. And on a moonless night, with the winds whispering tales of the unknown, he decided to embark on a journey that would lead him into the heart of the supernatural. As the witching hour approached, Sam stood on the platform of the forsaken train station, the spectral glow of the lanterns casting long, wavering shadows. The air was thick with an otherworldly presence, and he could hear the faint rustling of leaves in the haunted forest beyond. Suddenly, a mournful whistle pierced the silence, and from the depths of the forest, a ghostly train appeared, a spectral locomotive with ethereal wisps of fog billowing from its rusty stack. It glided along the tracks that seemed to lead nowhere, its windows filled with the faint, shimmering outlines of ghostly passengers. Intrigued and unafraid, Sam boarded the phantom train, stepping into a world where the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred into surreal uncertainty. The train's interior was an eerie blend of the familiar and the spectral. Dust-covered seats, tattered curtains, and flickering lanterns created an atmosphere that was both haunting and surreal. And yet, as Sam gazed upon the spectral passengers who occupied the seats around him, he felt a shiver crawl down his spine. Their faces were gaunt and pale, their eyes empty voids that seemed to see beyond the mortal realm. They sat in silence, their spectral forms barely touching the seats, as if they were tethered to the train by an invisible thread of despair. At the front of the train, a cryptic conductor, his face concealed beneath the brim of his hat, moved with an otherworldly grace. His skeletal hands gripped an ornate pocket watch, its hands frozen in time, and he muttered incantations beneath his breath. As the phantom train journeyed deeper into the haunted forest, Sam couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. The train seemed to move through a never-ending landscape of twisted, gnarled trees, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers to snatch at the night. Time lost its meaning as the journey continued, and Sam began to understand the eerie allure of the unknown, a fascination that drew him deeper into the surreal realm of the Phantom Express. Hours, days, or perhaps even years passed. And still, the train carried its ghostly passengers through the spectral landscape. The unending nature of their suffering became apparent, a cycle of eternal torment that bound them to this spectral journey. As Sam looked into the empty eyes of the passengers, he realized that they were trapped, unable to escape the never-ending cycle of the Phantom Express. 
They were prisoners of a haunting secret that had bound them to this spectral locomotive for all eternity. Desperate to uncover the truth, Sam approached the cryptic conductor, who regarded him with hollow eyes. With a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the abyss, the conductor whispered the chilling revelation. We are the souls of those who dared to board the Phantom Express, he intoned. We sought the unknown, and in doing so, we became a part of it. We are forever caught in a journey without end, a haunting existence that knows no escape. Sam's heart sank as he realized the consequences of his curiosity. He had become one of the spectral passengers, forever bound to the Phantom Express, doomed to wander through the haunted forest for all eternity. The train continued its endless journey, its wheels grinding against the rusted tracks, its lanterns casting a spectral glow. Sam, now a ghostly figure among the otherworldly passengers, sat in silence, his eyes empty and his soul trapped in the unending cycle of suffering. As the Phantom Express disappeared into the depths of the haunted forest, its mournful whistle echoing in the night, Sam couldn't help but wonder about the eerie allure of the unknown. The train had become a vessel for the unending nature of suffering, a place where the living and the dead became one, and where the boundaries of reality dissolved into the surreal. The Curse of Ravenwood Manor Ravenwood Manor, a sprawling and cursed estate, stood as a looming monolith amidst an ancient, overgrown forest. The very land upon which it was built seemed to pulsate with an otherworldly energy, an eerie testament to the malevolent forces that had plagued the Ravenwood family for generations. The cursed descendants of the Ravenwood family, bound by a dark legacy that had tormented them for centuries, were prisoners within the walls of the foreboding manor. Each generation had borne the weight of a curse they could neither understand nor escape. As the moon cast an eerie pallor upon the twisted trees that surrounded the manor, the Ravenwood family assembled in the grand foyer, a space adorned with sinister portraits of ancestors who had succumbed to the curse. Their faces, frozen in time, bore expressions of terror and despair. Alina, the matriarch of the Ravenwood family, her once regal countenance now marked by the weight of the curse, addressed her descendants. The time has come for us to confront our dark legacy, she declared, her voice filled with a determined resolve. We shall banish the malevolent entity that haunts this estate, and in doing so, break the curse that has bound us for centuries. The family members exchanged uneasy glances, their eyes betraying a mixture of fear and determination. For too long, they had suffered the malevolence that lurked in the shadows, the entity that whispered sinister promises in the dead of night. The manor itself seemed to pulse with a dark energy, its walls echoing with spectral echoes of past suffering. Haunted portraits leered from their frames, their eyes following the Ravenwood family members as they moved through the grand halls. In a hidden chamber, tucked away behind a thorn-covered door, lay a family journal, an ancient tome that chronicled the cursed history of the Ravenwood family. Alina retrieved the journal and began to read from its pages, her voice trembling with the weight of the past. Generations ago, our ancestor, Lord Nathaniel Ravenwood, made a pact with a malevolent entity she recited. In exchange for wealth and power, the entity cursed our family, condemning us to a life of torment and suffering. The room seemed to grow colder as Alina spoke, and the family members huddled together, their breath visible in the chill. The journal spoke of rituals and sacrifices, of desperate attempts to break the curse that had ultimately failed. But Alina believed that there was hope, a way to confront the malevolent entity and banish it from Ravenwood Manor. She outlined a plan that would require unity among the family members, a willingness to face their darkest fears, and a ritual that would bind the entity and sever its connection to the manor. As the clock struck midnight, the Ravenwood family gathered in the dimly lit chamber at the heart of the manor. The walls were adorned with the sinister family tree, its twisted branches bearing the names of ancestors who had fallen to the curse. The leaner led the ritual, her voice steady and unwavering. The family members held hands, forming a circle of unity, and recited incantations passed down through generations. Suddenly, the chamber was filled with a malevolent presence, a dark, swirling entity that seemed to materialize from the very shadows themselves. It hissed and writhed, its form ever-changing, as if it were a manifestation of the family's collective suffering. The Ravenwood family stood firm, their determination unwavering, as they confronted the entity. The malevolent force lashed out, tempting them with promises of power and wealth, but the family held fast. In a final, climactic moment, Alina invoked the power of unity and recited an incantation that bound the malevolent entity. It let out a deafening wail of despair as it was ensnared by an otherworldly force, its dark form slowly dissipating into nothingness. 
As the entity vanished, a profound stillness settled over Ravenwood Manor. The family members released their held breath, their hearts pounding with both fear and relief. They had faced their darkest fears and emerged victorious. Eleanor's eyes welled with tears as she looked upon her family. We have broken the curse, she declared, her voice filled with awe. Our ancestors may finally rest in peace, and our descendants shall know a life unburdened by the malevolent forces that plagued us. The manor, once a place of darkness and suffering, seemed to breathe a sigh of relief. The haunted portraits now bore expressions of release, their eyes no longer filled with torment. As the first light of dawn broke through the overgrown forest, the Ravenwood family emerged from the chamber, their faces marked by the trials they had endured. They had faced the curse head-on, and in doing so, had broken the chains that had bound them for centuries. As they looked out upon the ancient forest, now bathed in the soft, golden light of morning, they couldn't help but wonder about the burden of family legacies. The curse had been a formidable foe, but the power of unity against evil had proven even stronger. Ravenwood Manor, once a place of malevolence, had become a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, a place where darkness had been banished and the light of redemption had finally found its way.